touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Brother B.A. Ben Abraham, Yo. and I'm your host of the Man Up segment on the Big Talk For You platform. The objective is for all brothers from different walks of life to come together, link up, and build on matters concerning all various stages of life. If anyone would like to reach out on concepts and ideas, you can reach Brother B.A. at Radical Rhyme 1984 at gmail.com. Again, hey, Radical Rhyme 1984 at gmail.com. Tap in. Let's build. Tap. Shalom. Shalom. All praises, all honor, all glory to the supreme intellect of the universe. This is Nasi Yashuvel of Shomre HaTorah in Atlanta. And if I'm not reading my Torah or suplexing some false deity, I'm listening to my man, Sal Showtime, and Debate Talk for You Radio. Beautiful. Keep doing the good work, brother, bringing forth the information and spreading that love. Will it do, people? It's your boy, B. Lit Dive. And I'm chilling over here with my man, Sal Showtime, man. And I'm just here to let y'all know that there's only one place that you need to go to hear the word from the word, man. And that's at Debate Talk for you, man. I'm going to slow it down, man, because a lot of people slow. I speak fast because I'm from New York, but, you know, I'm going to slow it down, man. That's Debate Talk for you, hosted by my man Sit Al Showtime. You dig? Keep it tuned, man. You already know what it is. That dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. This is your chance to finally ask your questions live on the Big Talk for You. If you want to call in, the number is 319 527 6239. And my special guest is Garfield Reed from the Dagger Squad. Let me bring him in real quick. Garfield, welcome to the show. Hey, peace and love. One love to the family. Thank you for having me, Sal. You know, I appreciate it, brother. All right, man. I see that you're a busy man, man. You do a lot of live things, you know, a lot of live Facebook stuff, Instagram, all over the place, brother. What's going on with you, man? Yeah, I mean, you know, we got to we gotta expand and, and do what our, our passion is. You know, my passion has always been about um, economic empowerment. That's always been mm-hmm. my love you know, for the last 10 years. But, I mean, a lot of people know me because of debates. They know that side right. of me, but they don't know the economic side. So now I'm expanding and I'm doing what I really love and have the passion to do is um, empowering people's lives through economics. So that's what my passion is. But debating is just a hobby. But most, most of the Hebrew family know me because of debates, but it's all good, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Well, I appreciate the work that you've done. Uh, as you know, I'm a a big uh, fan of your morning show dealing with economics, you. Uh, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, how to fix your credit and uh, also giving people jobs, creating jobs for people. Uh, how is that show coming along? Well, it's been up and down because Facebook is kind of like, you know, blocking me from sharing my show. They want you to pay money and advertise. So they don't like when people share right. too many shows. So they kind of <laughs> have a hold of me right now. But I mean, I mean, we're gonna mm. we're gonna be all right, you know. We're gonna be all right. You know, the show's gonna expand yeah. and um, it's gonna grow and get bigger. I mean, on Wednesdays I'm on Sonata, on Black News 102 or Sonata Studio. So I mean, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm good. I'm in a good place right now. Yeah, there we go. And what I'm gonna do, family, I'm gonna leave the links in the description box, of course, for those who wanna reach out, wanna check out the morning show. Let the people know, you know, for those who don't know, what time it comes on in the mornings. Things of that nature. Good. Yeah. Well, basically, every morning we have a show from Monday to Friday. It's called the Morning Money Show. We start at 8.25 a.m. Eastern Time. All right? If you miss it, of course, it's Facebook, so you can always watch a, a replay of it later on whenever you have the time. But we basically, basically talk about credit. We talk about trade lines. We talk about funding. We talk about ways how to... um to adjust your paychecks through income shifting with um with my econ. We also have the Z Black card, which is a which is a card that I'm pushing a lot because it's black owned and operated. It's a it's a it's a prepaid debit card, but it's also a rewards card where you can make money. So I mean imagine if Sal Showtime had a debate talk for you 
prepaid debit card. Imagine the support he would get. But the greatness of the card is you could share or send money for free to each other. You know, also we have the Man Cave Sundays um, on the Dagger Squad YouTube channel. Right now that channel is down, so we have a, a channel called Man Cave for the Man Cave Sundays. If anybody want to subscribe to Man Cave and check that out. And every Sunday we talk information. We talk about history, economics, the stock market. So, you know, that's what we talk about on Sundays. We do any, any form of historical information and debates. It's Sunday morning. But during the week, it's all about stock market, bitcoins, cryptocurrency, credit, you know, trade line, funding, all type of different things to uplift you as far as economics is concerned. All right, once again, family, I see we have a lot more callers calling into the show. We have Garfield Reed, special guest Garfield Reed is in the hot seat right here on the Base Talk Free Radio. Uh, what that means is if you have any questions, family, any comments, as long as you keep it clean, keep it professional, you can definitely ask them right now or forever hold your peace. All you got to do is dial that number, 319-527-6239, and then press number one, and that will let me know that you have a question for Garfield Reed. I'm right, going to get this thing started. I'm going to start off with a few questions just to start it off, and then after that, we'll go to the family out there. That's pressing number one, and uh, we're going to get this thing started. Like I said, it's going to be 60 minutes, but the Garfield Reed, if you want more time, if you happen to have any more callers standing by, you know, once the 60 minutes have ran out, you can let me know if you want to go more. And I'm, more I'm, I'm on, bro. You got me tonight. I'm good. I'm good tonight. <laughs> we can go on and on and on and on. I'm ready. All right, cool. So let's lock it in right now. All right, so for those who don't know, Garfield Reed, I mean, you represent the Dagger Squad. Uh, maybe I'm not watching enough. Maybe I don't <laughs> I don't know. Who is the Dagger Squad? Like, how many members of the Dagger Squad is there? Wow. The Dagger Squad um, basically um, been around from, like, 2014. And what happened is we just used to be about debating, debating, debating. So you got myself. You got um, Christina Carter. You got Yassine Mohammed. Um, there's just so much people, man. It's just hard to keep a count. But um, the Dagger Squad is primarily a research group. You know, our um, as a matter of fact, hold up. Let me let me let me do something that I don't normally do. Let me um, bring up my um, my. Hold on a second here. Let me just bring up something on the screen real quickly. Uh, All right, not a problem. And once again, family, right, that number this, is one nine five two. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. The mission statement of Dagger Squad is to inspire and empower people to create content that educates, informs, and influences others to galvanize lifelong learning, advance knowledge, and strengthen our community. That's our mission statement. Let me repeat it. To inspire and empower people to create content that educates, informs, and influences others to galvanize lifelong learning, advance knowledge, and strengthen our communities. Now, Dagger Squad changed over the years. I got to be upfront because remember, we were all we were just all about debating. So when Mike Brown got killed in 2014, we changed direction. We started to push more economic empowerment. We changed the direction. We developed a nine-point plan. We did all that stuff. So we changed direction in 2014 because of Christina Carter and Yassine and other people, all right? So we changed direction. When we changed directions now, Garfield became the guy that started talking about credit, but I was still into the debate. So we decided that we wanted to buy what's called an abandoned tax. This is from 2014. So three people, Mo Smith, Christina Carter, Yassine Mohammed started a committee to develop a research to where we could leave the country and buy an abandoned town. We decided we wanted to move to Belize, right? We had three choices, actually. We had a town in, I think, North Carolina, Georgia, or Belize. So when you see Garfield talk about the abandoned town, I never came up with that idea. That was an idea by Christina Carter, Yassine Mohammed, and Mo Smith. But I'm always the front guy. So everybody see me talk, but it's not my idea. It's other people's idea, all right? So um, the abandoned town, and we started um, researching that because that's the ultimate goal is to, is to develop teams in every state, you know, 100 men and black men and black women team in each state and develop economic empowerment teams because that's the only thing we all can agree on. I could be on your show for hours, Sal, and we could debate the Bible, we could debate New Testament, Old Testament, Quran, 
the Vishnu, the Gathas from the Persians, any book, and we're always going to disagree. But one thing we all agree on, we all need to be empowered economically. So whether it's true stock market, whether it's better in your credit, so that's something that I push that a lot of people don't know. I mean, I've been doing it for over 10 years. People in the background like Wayne Barnes and, and, and even James Cassell and um, a couple of brothers from the back chat. Well, we've been in the back chat for years, know that I've been dealing with economics for a while, but we all, they all know me for debating. But the, the Dagger Squad, if you want to check us out, we got a website, Dagger Squad, I-N-C, Dagger Squad, Inc., dot com. Or you could go on the YouTube, on the, I'm sorry, Facebook, go to the Dagger Squad, Inc. like page, and you press the About button, and you see our nine-point plan. What our nine-point plan is about, it's about economic empowerment. Matter of fact, my, my book is coming out this year. I have a couple of books I'm working on. One of them has to do with the Hebrew Israelite doctrine. I have a book called um, Mis- Misconception and Misinformation of the Black Hebrew Israelite, Volume 1. It's going to touch on some issues that I think is a, that does need to be brushed out the way. That's holding back Hebrew Israelites from growing or maturing um, scholarly wise. You know, there's some things that even Hebrews will agree with me. You know, and um, that's one thing I'm working. I'm also working on a nine-point plan, which is my book, which is going to show everything in my nine-point plan. One of the things that I have in the nine-point plan that I need a whole community for is um, the Conflict Resolution Center. The Conflict Resolution Center is basically we developing our own con- a, a, a national number where we could have people call the number instead of calling the police when it's not a lethal or, or, or um, somebody's life in, is in danger or whatever. Because what happened to us in our community family, whenever we call the cops, three things happen. We had the black man always get beat up, he get arrested, or he get killed. So to solve or limit our interactions with police unnecessarily, we could have what's called a National Conflict Resolution Center. You have some beautiful brothers out there that are very good with calming brothers down who are very good with counseling. Divine Prospect is one. Um, Captain Tazariak is another one. Nazi Yashavel is another one. Lord Abba is another one. I got brothers in the Nation of Islam, the, in the Black Panther Party, who are very good when it comes to counseling, holding people down when there's a crisis. So if we have these brothers already in the community working, why not set up a center? where we could call people and then dispatch our own people, have them, and then we were going to set it up. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, the Dagger Squad is doing a lot. Right now, Sal, we are hiring people for virtual customer service jobs. You could work from your home. Dagger Squad is hiring. You could be a part of a church, a mosque, a synagogue. You could be Baptist, Methodist. I don't care who you are. We are hiring you. All you need to do is have a desktop computer. You need to have a, um, a landline, phone line. And you need to work mandatorily 15 hours per week. This is what the Dagger Squad is doing. So we could debate all day. As I said, economic empowerment is something that we could agree on. There are sisters out there right now who just had children who are home who could be doing a virtual customer service job from home. We don't pay $50 an hour, but we pay a livable wage that could help you to get by until you get something better. All right? We're not paying you no McDonald's money, but we're paying you a good, decent pay that's going to help you out in your household while things get better. All right? So pretty much Dagger Squad deal with economics. I deal with a lot with the debates. You might see me on Sonnet every now and then. I just had a dialogue with, um, with Divine Prospect, a very good dialogue that everybody should watch and analyze because there's a lot of things in there. As Hebrew Israelites, you won't like hearing what um, Divine said, and there's a lot of things that I said that Hebrew Israelites might like what I said. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, that's about it for now. But if you have any callers, I'm ready, brother. Ready to go. All right, family. Uh, once again, it's debate talk for you. That number to call in is three one nine five two seven six two three nine. If you're already on the phone line, it's press number one. I will gladly bring you in the conversation. All right, once again, it's uh three one nine five two seven six two three nine. Now, Garfield, uh, pretty much like you mentioned, you also. Uh, are on a house of consciousness with Sarnetta and uh, the rest of the family over there. Uh, let the people know, like, in your opinion, in your humble opinion, what's the state of the house of consciousness today? Um, the state of consciousness, um, the state of the house of consciousness or the state of consciousness? Well, let's go with the state of consciousness. Go ahead. 
All right, the state of consciousness as far as people waking up um, to information. I mean, a lot of if you look at my uh, how I have evolved, I'm not the same guy I was four or five years ago. I mean, um, the consciousness, people are waking up. My only problem is if, if somebody is waking up, don't wake up because you're mad with the Bible. Don't wake up because you're mad with the religion and then join another tradition and then turn that tradition into what you used to believe in, meaning that don't go and follow Kemet or West African culture and then turn that culture into what you used to believe in in Christianity. I think we, we all need to detox um, spiritually. We all need to detox completely from whatever we learn from another culture. We all should try to um, to reorient. This is my words. Like people would say, go off you what you believe. I said it's not about what I believe. Is what I can prove and what I know. I know I'm from the Akan culture. I know that. I could trace the fact that I'm from the Ashanti tribe. I could trace my roots to Jamaica and trace it back to Africa to the boats. I have documents. I have I have um, ship records. I have all type of records to prove how I got to the West. I I can identify with the culture that I was a part of and what that culture used to follow in Africa. So. I think everybody should try to reorient themselves back to their roots to the best of their ability. Some people can't afford a DNA test. And a matter of fact, some people don't even believe in DNA. I believe in DNA because right now if a woman comes on my timeline while I'm live right here on, on Facebook right now, I said, Garfield, you know that baby is mine. And I said, whoa, who's that? I have to now take a test called a DNA test to prove that that baby is mine or not. So I don't dispute whether science is real or whatever, because science is basically the study of nature. And if you study nature, you're really studying what's a, a quote-unquote creator or God, because the aspects of nature is what got humans curious to where the wind came from, where the sun came from, where the moon came from. So you have different cultures that we call these different, um, what's the word? different um, aspects of nature. They would call him a god. So you'd have people have the moon god. Then you'd have the sun god. You'd have the wind god. You know, then you'd have the thunder god because you don't know where the thunder came from. You know, shout out to Mendeecee's, um Drake. Shout out to Cedric Brown that's watching on Facebook. Um, you know, so, so, so when we, um, the, the, the fact of the matter is as black folks in America, we are curious. And that's what led us, many of us, to the Bible, the out of curiosity. Plus, that was the religion that the person who was in charge believed in. So we were attracted to the book, but then when we took the book and made it ours, we remixed it in our own way. So you started having the black African, you started having the African Episcopal Church, the African Methodist Church, the Zion AME Church. You know, you start having these different churches which helped in us growing in this country because that was our access. As my brother True Story in our Raw Bond would say, it's a tool that was used to let us reach certain areas in, um, in this society. So we had to adopt the church. So in the, in the late 1700s, you had Absalom Jones and, and um, the other brother, I forgot his name now, the Free African Society. So when you had the Free African Society and then they started having their own little guilds and own little groups and, and then they started the black church and then this church sprung up. And black folks on, on plantation started pulling together and having the mindset. Nobody was thinking about if they were a Hebrew or an Israelite at that time. But if that, that ever came up, there was something called the Exodus Movement, where people thought similar slavery, leaving the South to go to the North. That's when the Exodus Movement started. And that's when we started moving from being a part of what they had as, as far as being free or being slaves and buying other slaves out of slavery and everything. But we adapted this culture of religion, you know, the folkways, the mores and norms that we had from cultures way that, that, that were developed way before America, we lost all of that when we took, the, um, took the, um, the Bible in. Because we didn't have a Bible in West Africa until a certain time period, until the 15th century um, AD. So as far as we coming from West Africa, there was no Bible there for us to mingle with or anything. In fact, for a thousand years, you could not distribute a Bible, a biblical text, or anything. It wasn't even allowed. So for anybody to run around and say, hey, we are this or we are that, we have to be clear and know the history of the biblical text. Anything that you claim 
there's always somebody that's going to support it. But you, the, the bottom line is, is not if you can support it, is what do you have that can prove it without a doubt that it's right and exact. So I have no problem with anybody being a Hebrew Israelite because I think the whole thing was actually made up when anybody claims that. That's just my opinion. And by Arian, the, the, the one with camp or whatever, I'm actually, I'm actually not, not upset that they made up whatever they made up. I think that's what we do. That's what black folks do. We take stuff and we do the Puff Daddy remix on it. That's what we do. And we'll always do that because we're innovators, imitators. We will take a simple song with a simple beat and then just do something to the beat, and now it's a hit record. That's just us in our nature. As black folks, we have rhythm. You know, we're just totally different. So we always do things and just get the best out of it. All right, family, this is the Hot Seat segment right here on the Bay Talk Radio. Special guest, Garfield Reed. If you have a question for Garfield Reed, you know that number. It's 319-527-6239. you got to press number one. I see we have a lot of listeners. I see some Skype callers. Uh, if, you're, if you're on Skype, all you got to do is press number one if you have a question, and we'll bring you in. Let's go to the first caller, though. Let's go to 530-434. You're live in there. Uh, greetings and shalom. This is our brother B.A. out of Sacramento, California. Much love to the brother uh, Garfield. What's, what's going on, Sal? Peace and love, brother. Peace and love. Yeah, Garfield, I would like to say first, um, I had no idea that Dak and Squad was doing the things they're doing. And um, it's good to hear that, man. I appreciate that. And um, and I appreciate your love for our people despite our, our differences and things of that nature. And I, that's one thing. Um, the few times I had dealt with you, I know that you've always had, you've always been um, genuine. You've always been cordial with me, despite the fact there's times where I've been put my foot in my mouth a few times, but it's all good. But um, I would like to uh, ask you a question concerning the book of Daniel, because uh, it's brothers like you that opened my eyes to textual criticism, which I was not aware of that until a couple of years ago when I first met you on the hangouts with a few of the other brothers. Yes, um, sir. So I would like to ask, so I'd like to ask you, um, when it can when it comes to the Book of Daniel, what was the first sources that was that was brought to your attention that there was it was a questionable text? Um, the Book of Daniel, the first source that said it was a questionable text. Um, hmm, wow, that was one of the first things I ever studied. As far because remember, I come from a Bible believing background, so Daniel was one of the books that. I use as a to keep me in the faith. And even if I didn't believe in the New Testament, after a while, at least I had the Old Testament. So with Daniel, I would say, hmm, that's a tough one. Because this is a long time ago. Off the top of my head, damn, what's the name of this brother? What's the name of this guy's guy again? Um, to be honest with you, brother, I don't recall right right now the person name. It's, I think it's a guy named Till, T-I-L-L. I think it was his writings I read. And when I read his writings, I read um, there's a guy that uh, – a Christian guy. Um, I forgot what his name was. But um, the, the guy named is Till, I think. I think it's Till. He's an old-time guy, Bible guy, who used to write and go into the, the, the words of the Bible and all that stuff. But with the book of Daniel, we have to be very, very careful. Because the book of Daniel is up there as one of the <clears throat> books that we respect the most, along with Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Isaiah, those prophets. So he's up there, you know. And one of the things that, 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 um, that had me look into Daniel was the fact that when he was writing, he didn't know anything during the time when he was writing. Meaning that if he lived in the 6th century B.C., he didn't know um, that Nabonidus was... Belshazzar's father, he said Nebuchadnezzar was. He wrote it several times, you know, Daniel 5 and Daniel 2. And, um, you know, just, just certain things about the historical time period that kind of amazed me, you know, that he didn't know. Then he wrote some words in Greek, you know, the, the, the instrument. He wrote them in Greek. So those words were in Greek, and the Greek Empire didn't rule until after the 3rd century B.C. So I'm like, how is he writing, and then this is, and then I started reading Porphyry, who, who was in the third century. He was like a Neoplatonist. I, re, I read his work. Then I read um, 
the guy that wrote the Latin Vulgate, Jerome, Jerome, who was in charge of the Latin Vulgate put, getting put together. He was a believer, supposedly a believer, and he said that Daniel was written in the second century primarily. Then I looked at the Jewish encyclopedia. They <coughs> said that it was written in the second century. Then, you know, mm-hmm. other people started saying that, and then they had a writing called the Son of Sirach, Jesus, the Son of Sirach in the second century, a legitimate writing dated to about 180 B.C., and they had the names of all the seers and the prophets, and they didn't mention Daniel. So I had a problem with that. So if Daniel was the, was the boss or people knew him, then they would have mentioned him, you know, but we didn't find a book. Uh, the first manuscript of Daniel, I think, is 50 B.C. So mm-hmm. I started thinking about the, the writing, how he didn't know who Nabonidus was, and he mixed up Nabonidus with Daniel, and then we found out in the Dead Sea Scrolls that really and truly a lot of Daniel's work we found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and instead of Nebuchadnezzar's name, it should have been Nabonidus. And it could have been a little scribal error because both of their names kind of are similar in letters. So, <clears throat> you know, that, all of that stuff led me to say that Daniel is, whether he's a real person or not, is not the issue. The issue is that some of the book was written in the second century B.C. I hope I was able to respond to your question, brother. Yeah, and... um. And one thing about it, too, you know what I'm saying, you were one of the first brothers to point that out to me, uh, especially when it came to certain set of Hebrews. I mean, because you know, a lot of us who rock with Christ, we, we accept if we, we, we believe it's pointing towards him. But when it comes to another set of Hebrews, they either don't deal with the book of Daniel, which is something you pointed out to me, and which tends to be very common. I'm not saying that all the other set of Hebrews don't deal with Daniel, but you did point out to me that a significant number of them don't deal with it. So that that led me that, and I remembered that when I was listening listening to you a little earlier, and I was like, I want to get with that brother and find out from sources, man, so I can do do some uh, examining and some studying for myself and look more thoroughly into the matter. So uh, yeah, but I remember. Let me let me yeah, let me also let me let me also add, brother, that one of the scriptures I I I come at the um the believers with is Daniel five verses thirty, when it talks about Belshazzar dying. And then Darius the me taking over. So what I said to a lot of believers is that Garfield don't have anything in the Bible, but let me help you guys out. What happened is whoever wrote Daniel, that part of Daniel, knew about Jeremiah's prophecy in Dan, in Jeremiah 51.11. Because Jeremiah 51.11 is prophesying that God is saying, to the, um, saying through Jeremiah, right, He's attempting to full, right, Ben Nock, He's attempting to fulfill Jeremiah fifty one eleven because in Jeremiah fifty one eleven he talks about how Babylon would be destroyed by the Medes. But the Medes were an empire that was already destroyed by the Persians in five fifty BCE. So they were already destroyed. And what happened is the person who is writing doesn't know that because he's three hundred <laughs> years away. He would know that. So he's going by Jeremiah. So he had to fulfill the prophecy. So he said, you know what? After Belshazzar was killed, the brother that took over for the Persian Empire was Darius the Mede. Now, Darius, for anybody who knows history and Persian chronology, we know that Ezra 2.1 or Ezra 1 and Isaiah 44.28 and Isaiah 45.13 talks about how God said that Cyrus would be the one that freed the Jews from Babylon. So now, if we already know that, that, so that would mean that the Bible is contradicting itself because in one instance, you're saying that the history is saying that Darius did it. But on the other hand, God is saying that Cyrus is going to do it. But history also agrees that Cyrus was the one that took over from Nabonidus, not Belshazzar. So now we have history to coincide with what Garfield is saying. So the history and the chronology is incorrect. And everybody might say, well, Persians, sometimes they have two co leaders, right? Now, the, they have the chronology of people who, who led them. Darius did not come to power till like 521 or 517 BCE or whatever. And of course, I'm using BC time. Don't get me on that. We know what 5 BCE is. Five, I mean, 517 BC is basically based on the Gregorian calen- calendar um, 2,500 years ago, all right? 2,600 years ago. So our 2,500 and 10 years ago. But my point is that I'm making is that those two people could not rule at the same time. And when you read Daniel 6, 1, you could tell that the person was in charge because he's saying he's sending people to rule over the 120 satraps. 
So the 120 satraps, ladies and gentlemen, is areas that the governors are going to control. So if you're going to control in part in the whole kingdom, the person who is in charge, Cyrus, would be the one to do that, not Darius. So obviously the person who is writing is not aware. You know, just like the simple error of saying Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's son. And a lot of Christians and, and, and believers say, well, the word son could also mean grandson. And by the way, family, Nabonidus was not related to anybody in the kingdom. He was not bloodline. So that's how you got to look at it. He circumvented the kingdom, meaning that he came in and bullied his way in because he was not bloodline of Nebuchadnezzar. He's not related to Nebuchadnezzar. So we need to make that clear 100% to anybody that's listening. And you could check it out yourself. If you need a source, inbox me on Facebook, Garfield Reed, and I'll give you the source. Or you could go to um, um, Livius.org if you want to have the English version. You could see the version that is written in, Cyrus Salinda. It's there. You could read it that he took over from, from, from Nabonidus, and it shows that God, Marduk, was mad with Nabonidus because he destroyed their temples and destroyed what their, their temples looked like. So they were angry at him. So that's why they removed him and they assigned Cyrus to be the Messiah or the Prince of Peace. When you read the Cyrus Alinda, it doesn't mention Hebrews, Jews, Judean, Israelites, nobody. What, he's, what they refer to is the people that were part of the temples that Nabonidus destroyed. So now the Bible, and then now... And then now the Bible is, is in coordination with it. Because remember, at that time period when Cyrus took over, he's considered the Mashiach in your own Bible. So he's called the Messiah in your Bible, and he's called the Messiah in Babylonian writing, and he's called the Messiah in Persian writing. So they all agree together because guess what? The Persians are in charge. So that means the pen writing of the, the, the priests or the scribes are now under spreading the same propaganda of Cyrus being the guy sent by the gods. So in Babylon, Marduk sent Cyrus. In Israel or in Judea, Yahweh sent Cyrus. Do you understand what I'm saying? So anywhere that Cyrus helped and conquered, you would see in the literature of that culture that Cyrus was sent by the God of that culture or of that land. I hope I was there. Well, there, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, I will reach out to you on Facebook, man, and get some more stories. I'll take some Thank you, brother. I appreciate you for your time. And uh, thanks again, sir. I'm going to fall back. And shalom. All right. Peace and love, brother. Shalom to you, too. All right. All right, family. Once again, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. This is the hot seat segment of Debate Talk Radio where you can finally call in and ask your questions and your comments. By the way, I got a few email questions for those who don't have my email. My email is debate talk for you at gmail.com or you can hit me up on social media, my inbox, and I'll gladly read out your questions. But we prefer for you to press number one. I see we have a lot of people in the phone lines. So you can press number one, and we'll add you to the conversation. Let me get to one of these questions right here. Uh, this one is from Zeki Ben Yashrel. I appreciate your email question. It says, uh, our people has always been spiritual. Please explain which religion is needed is best for our people. If you don't subscribe to spirituality for black people, then do you believe that non-believers have the answers to balance amongst black people? Shalom. That's the question. Yeah, good answer. You know what? I don't think um, any one religion or any one spiritual system or any one culture system, cultural system can solve our, our, our problems. What we need to do, though, family, and, I, and, and this might hurt some people's um, feelings, but the problem is, as I said before at the beginning, we have to reorient ourselves with our roots and our culture. Try to find out where you came from. If you feel you're from Israel from 2,700 years ago, which is practically almost impossible to prove, if you could prove that and then go and live by the laws that you're living by, this is why I don't knock people for what they live. I don't knock you for living by the laws. There's nothing wrong with living by the laws of your Bible or the Quran or of the Gatha. Or if I was to follow the Akan culture, they have something called the personhood where I would have to adopt a certain type of behavior if I have, by the way, I act. So if you have laws, there's something called a personhood, and there's a six-step system that I have to follow in the Akan culture. So every culture has sets of rules. Even Kemet, 
even all the cultures, the Yoruba culture, the Akan culture, the um the Songhai under the Songhai Empire, or whatever. There's always some sort of rules in the Quran, in the Muslim laws. There's always some sort of laws in the ancient Near East. Even the Greeks, the Athenians had their set of laws. So having laws and and and, and a system is not the solution. It it can't be the solution. Because we are, we have a bunch of people who believe right now in this Bible. I know what people are going to say. Well, Garfield, they don't really believe the Bible because they're Baptists or they're Methodists. I, I can't judge that. That's between them and their belief and their creator. I'm not the one to judge them. They are the ones that need to follow through with what they believe in. So I'm not going to judge and wipe out all people. I appreciate the Hebrew Israelites, the ones who follow the tenets of the, the Torah, I follow the laws and try to live correctly by it. I support them 100%. My issue is if the, the Hebrew Israelites are right, are living by that law, why is it that we don't have our own land, our own culture? Why I don't see the, 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 the individuality of this set doing progress so that they could be an example for the rest of black folks in America? That's all it is. If the Hebrew Israelites are correct and we say, okay, Let's see what they're doing. Show me the land that you guys have. Show me where you have a, have a community living and saying that, hey, we need to follow this community by example. Show us that in a mass level here in America. And that then so that the people could say, hey, we could not the Hebrew Israelites because we don't, like, we don't think their belief is real. But, hey, whether it's real or not, they are showing and proving. So I don't think any one system, to answer the brother's question, can solve all our problems because we are different people from different cultural backgrounds. If you go to the roots.com, root.com has an article of showing like 40 different tribes that came to North America alone. We need to study that and try to trace our roots and see what our real culture is. I don't think we're Israelites based on history, based on anthropology, based on DNA, based on science. I don't think we are historically Hebrew Israelites. I think what the DNA says and what history says, we are 90%. That's what we are. Now, if you believe that, that they are Hamites and that they are cursed or they are Hamites and you can't be a Hamite, I'm not here to de debate that. I'm saying to you, that's your belief. The West, the West Africans are what they are. They are West Africans. And they have the E1, B1A DNA, which has been in West Africa between 20 and 30,000 years. So E1, B1A cannot be Israelite DNA. That's for the people who push that craziness, all right? So now if those people have been in West Africa for 20 to 30,000 years, according to science, and now when we migrate here, we, have, we are 90% West Afri Western Central Africans, that's telling us who we are. So if you want to say the Bible says this and the prophecy says this, which I'm going to talk about later about prophecy, we have to look at the Bible at two different, several different ways. Were they going to look at it as a historical book? Were they going to look at it as cultural literature? Or are you just going to say, you know what, this is a book just for the sake of reading. All right, because then I'm going to put into play, I'm going to bring the Greeks writing, I'm going to bring the Persian, Persian, what they wrote, although we don't have any evidence of that. And then I'm going to bring what the Egyptians wrote. I'm going to bring what the Assyrians wrote. I'm also going to bring prophecies and predictions from other cultures. And I'm going to show you prophecies that people wrote that are similar to the ones that you have in your Bible. And you tell me, why is it that they're saying the same thing that you're saying? And why should I follow your system and not follow theirs? Because it seems like every culture in the Bible prospered except the Israelites. And then when the Israelites don't prosper, they say, oh, it's because you never followed Yahweh or you didn't follow his laws. But what about the people who Yahweh blessed to beat you up? The Babylonians weren't living by Yahweh's laws, but yet still Yahweh used them to beat up on certain people in the Bible. Yet, yet still the Persians weren't living by Yahweh's laws, but yet still they were blessed. Why would you use Cyrus, a believer in Ahura Mazda? Why not use somebody from your own culture to save you? Why call somebody the Messiah who believe in Ahura Mazda and Zoroastrianism? You see, these are the things that we got to think about. All right? But I'll... Digress from that and go to the next question, brother. 
All right, family, once again, it's the Hot Seat segment right here on the Bay Toffee Radio. This is your time. This is your time, family, to ask your questions live. Some people never get a chance to speak to my brother live, go off for a read. This is your opportunity. That number, once again, is 319-527-6239. Once you dial in, you got to press number one, and that'll let me know that you got a question. But let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to 305-879. You'll have an air. Go ahead, up on. Okay. Um... Hello. Shalom, 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 shalom. Um, God for you. Peace and love, peace and love. Peace and love, my brother. Okay, last time I was on your show, I didn't like that game what you played, bro. I want to say something. Hear me out. I'm a grown man. I don't play games, right? When we was on the show, right, I asked you a question. I asked you a specific question, and you give me an answer. You told me that the Ashantis, the certain tribe in Africa that have an oral tradition saying that they came from Egypt and they came from Libya, but originally they were from Israel. And I asked you a specific question. You said out of your own mouth, anyone can go on the tape and listen to that deb- uh, discussion. You turned this into a debate. It was just a discussion. And uh, Isaiah is up, 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 was supposed to be on it. And you block Izari and allow a war to come on because you don't want to be exposed. So I ask you this specific question. I ask you a question about the Ashanti. And you, anyone can go on the tape and listen to the tape. About two hours into the tape, when we came on, you said out of your own mouth, there was a horror tradition amongst the Ashanti that they came from Israel. You say that. Then, when I try to question in it, you come back and say that they were taught by the Europeans. So I want to, you to give me a specific date when they were taught the Bible custom by the European, and when they were taught that they were Israelite, they were descended from Israel. I want you to give me a specific date when, because you said, you, you said, because you double talk, you say, the Ashanti agree with me that the Ashanti have an old tradition that they came from Israel. Then you went back and say, when I caught you, you went back and say, the Europeans taught them that they were Israelite and taught them the biblical custom, right? Another question is two questions I'm going to ask you, right? And a statement, a question and a statement. I lived in England for uh, quite a while, and I, I went to Rome. And I saw the Arch of Titus. Anyone can go online and Google it up. I went there and see the ch- t- Arch of Titus. And on the t- uh, chart of t- Titus, it say Judean capture. And that was in common uh, celebration and com- commemoration of the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. And on the arch, there's a menorah. I see it with my own eyes. I went there and see it with my own eyes when I used to live in England. And on the arch, and the Romans is very detailed in their historical exploit. And on the arch, they have the manure, kind of manure. When you read in Luke 21, 20 to 40, Jesus Christ speak about the nation of the Romans destroying Jerusalem in 70 AD. So I want you to explain to the people about the arch over there. I know you haven't been there. I've been there. I want you to explain to the people about the heart of Titus to prove that Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. That's not, you know, that's, that's a non-biblical archaeology record here. And that proved that Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. So I want you to address those two statements while I just make, question and statement while I just make. First and foremost, brother, I appreciate you coming on and um, asking a question. That's the first thing. And um, I'm going to respond to you. And you see, one of the issues that we have as a, as a, as a brother that um, I'm going to talk to you as a, as a yard man, and I'm going to talk to you as a man. No, no, I'm not a yard man. He's an Israelite. I was born in Atlanta, Jamaica, but I'm an Israelite. You notice I gave you your respect, right? I never interrupted you one yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just, I'm just correcting your statement, though. All right. All right. Okay. All right. 
Now, the brother brought up two issues for those on Facebook who are watching. Okay, what the hell is his question? All right, many issues. His question is this, basically. He's saying, and I, and I need to get clarification on the 70 AD issue. The 70 AD, the Romans did destroy a temple in what's called Judea, right? I have no dispute with that. But what is your, can you tell me what your real, what your question is behind 70 AD? Because I'm not disputing where the Romans destroyed the area. So what is your question regarding 70? Because I'm not clear on that. I need some clarity on that. No, what I'm proving, right, that because he was talking about certain things in the Bible is not right. But I'm just proving that specific event was mentioned by Jesus Christ. And that happened 40 here. And they have the hearts there has a celebration of that prophecy that was fulfilled that Jesus Christ predicted when he was walking the earth, because he told the Jews that when you see Jerusalem, because you said that you agree with that, that Judea was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. You agree with that? So they, they set up their hearts to commemorate the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And Jesus Christ in Luke 21, anyone can go and read it. Luke 21, verse 20 to 24 it's prophesied about that destruction, that event. And I want you to answer the other question what I asked you about the Ashanti. Um, I want you to well, answer that on. too. I'm going to, get, I'm going to get to the Ashanti in a second, but I'm trying to figure out, if, are you saying that because it's in Luke and it was prophesied that hence the Bible is legitimate? Is that your argument? No, I'm talking about a specific event. I'm not talking about the no, Bible. I'm, not, I'm talking about a specific either. event. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. So I'm, I have no argument that the, um, Jerusalem was um, the temple of the story. There's no argument from Garfield for that because that's historical. And they were Jews, right? They were, they were Jews, right? They were Judean. They were Judean residents. But at that time period, the Judean residents. No, were mixed. I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. Were they Jews? Yes or no? Yes or no? No, 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 no. no, no. We, we have to be clear. Judean, Judean residents are different than ethnical people who come from. Judea period. I didn't ask that you that, period, period. I didn't ask Hold you on. that. I, I, Are you going to let me finish? Are you going to let me finish? One at a time, though. Yeah. I have to, yeah, I have to let you finish. You. I because you finish. I don't think, honest, to be honest, whether I answer you yes or no, it's not going to change anything. So, But I'm going to answer you anyway. Right. And I want you to give me the same respect that I give you. All right? I listen to you. I want you to listen to me. Can can we do that? Okay. You're the Israelite. Okay, yeah. Israelite How are you? All right. You're supposed to be the discipline. Right. right. All right. Now, what no, we need yeah, to go to say, say what you have to say. 6 AD. Here we go again. Maybe I need to take a break. No, I'm listening. I'm listening, Garfield. I'm listening. Yeah, let us see. Right. Yeah, let Garfield speak. At six, yeah. at, six, at 6 AD, right? At 6 AD in history, you had Quirinius who was governor. When he became governor, right, like what Ben Nock is saying, from Syria to Edom... From Syria to Edom was Judea. All of Syria and Edom and Judea was one spot called Judea. They changed it. They changed the geography. When they changed the geography, that means Edomites now would be considered Judean. So that's why when I said to you, you said they were Jews, right? They were Jews, right? Yes, yes, in the sense of the terminology of the word. But they were, yet everybody was considered residents of Judea because Judea was a place. So the, the, the geography was enlarged. So it's not Judea as far as, hey, these people were Israelites. No, it's not in that sense. It's where they were considered Judean, Yehudim. All right? Now, the second thing I'm going to answer. Oh, the, what I'm going to say. Well, 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 coffee, coffee, one minute. Well, coffee, yeah, just, brother, a minute, just a minute. I just heard you out, man. You got to let me finish yeah, and yeah. respond to I'm gonna, thing, yeah. brother. Yeah, I just muted this mic. I'm, I'm a, I'll just mute this mic. I'm going to bring you in once Garfield is done. You know, that, that way we can uh, hear everybody. Okay, Garfield. All right. The issue that the brother is probably missing from the um, 70 AD, and I'm going to share my screen on Facebook for those who want to see this. I'm going to share my screen on Facebook, but I'm going to read this a little piece of this article just to clarify. It's called The Myth of the Judean Exile. And what happened is there is this thing that a lot of people who are very religious, who are Israelites, like, like to say that after 70 AD, they were dispersed 
and they were exiled into West Africa. Now, this article, if you, anybody wants this article or the book, I could send it to you through Facebook, all right? It has the sources and everything. When you look at the sources, family, nobody was exiled. It tells you exactly who was exiled. It tells you who started the story about the exiling of the Jews. It was a political story started by Christians, actually. So I want to make it clear to everybody that's listening. Listen to the logic. At 70 AD, right, a million people were recorded as being killed who were Judeans. One million Judeans. We are taught now by our Hebrew Israelite community that a million people went into West Africa. How did we get these figures wrong? Jo- um, Josephus wrote 1,100,000, 1, which is 1.1 million Judeans were killed. He said 97,000 were captured and taken to, I think, Egypt. All right? Now, 97,000 Judeans. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is 70 AD. Now, this war, allegedly, by many believers, is because of, you know, they had beef with the Romans or whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But the issue, family, is that 60 years later, you had another revolt and you had another set of people who were Judeans claiming that this guy named Simon bar was actually the Christ. So if Jesus was alive and lived, 33 AD and died, why is it in almost 100 years later, you have the same set of people living in the same region claiming that somebody else is the Christ? It doesn't make sense. And this is history. We don't have to fight and argue and say, oh, this person didn't exist or not. This is Simon bar It's called the bar revolt. They call him the Messiah. Now, after that, that's when they kicked everybody out of Judea and moved them up. A lot of them moved up into northern, what's called Israel today, northern Israel and Galilee area. So the Judeans weren't exiled. They moved up. That's what it proved. They were expanding. You see an expansion of the population. This is documented, family. There's nobody exiled into West Africa. So my issue is not the arch of Titus, because that is real. So I agree with the brother on the line. The arch of Titus is real, but the whole concept of 70 AD and a million people going into West Africa is a scam. It's a sham. It's not real. It's not true. It's a myth. So that's what we need to be clear about because the info, there's nothing documented in history that says that anybody was exiled into West Africa. And even if you were exiled into West Africa, I'm going to tell you I'll add on a little story. Because remember, there was something in between 70 AD and 130 AD, there was another war. It's called the Kittos War. Google it, K-I-T-O-S. The Kittos War is Judeans. If you want to call them Jews, that's fine. The Jews would kill off the Roman family in northern Africa and take off their skin and eat it or wear it as clothes. That's documented. So if you want to claim to be these people who used to skin people and eat them like cannibals, that's documented in history. You want to say you're descendants of those people? Go ahead. You could be them all you want. They were cannibals. I don't want nothing to do with those people. You can if you want to wear a title, wear a name. Jew or were they Jew? Were they Jew? Were those people Jews who were eating the people and wearing their, wearing their skin, cutting their skin off and wearing it as clothes? That's disgraceful. And then the Romans came up and, and, and kind of and killed them off in the Northern Africa and killed off some of the Judeans in Egypt who were living in Egypt at that time. So that's 70 AD, you have a war. 115, you have another war. And in 130, you have another war. How is it that you have over 500,000, half a million people dead in the, in the, in the, in the Bar Koba revolt, but yet still all the Judeans fled to West Africa? How did you get half a million people in, in, in the same place then, if everybody fled? All right. So let's move on to the next point now. So that's dealing with 70 AD and why he really brought it up, because that's what the issue was. It wasn't about if anything happened. Whether Jesus predicted it or not, I'm not going to get into that, because you can't show me a manuscript that pre- of Luke, that scripture. You can't show me a manuscript before 3rd century AD of that scripture. So I don't know if it was written before or written after. I can't tell. I don't have no time to go into textual criticism right now. And, 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 and by the way, I don't think you're equipped to have a textual criticism conversation. You got to send for divine prospect or somebody like that. The second thing now that the brother brought up was about the um the oral the oral traditions and um what do you call it. All right. 
I'm going to go on my screen. For those who are on Facebook, you get the benefits of seeing this because I have my whole files here in front of me. Let's go to what's called the Hamitic hypothesis. All right. The Hamitic hypothesis, right, it basically is the origins of it. This is, what, this is what happened, ladies and gentlemen. What they would do is they would go into, this is, um, I actually have this book on my computer, Across Cultural Borders, right? And I'm going to press on this for a second. And if anybody studies history, what happened, family, the Hamitic hypothesis, let me get off of this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, family. Let me just make this clear to everybody that's watching because I want people to see the sources and everything. This guy here, African history and the tradition of the historical writing. You see, what happened is a lot of people don't realize historical writing in Africa is not old. Africans, West Africans were not writers. They didn't no writing system in place that was like in Kemet. They didn't have that. A lot of the history is based off of oral tradition. So if you wanted to change the culture, what you would do is you would inject into the, the African stuff. And, and I wish I was prepared because I thought I was looking at some stuff today, prove my point. But let's, let's take a look at this real quickly here, this article, right? Journal of Science. I'm going to, um, for anybody who wants this article again, it's from the Center of Excellence website. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read something that I read on Sunday the other night, all right, to, um, to my brother, um, Divine Prospect. Um, hold on a second here. Let me see if I could find this real quickly here. The purpose of the Hamitic hypothesis. This is what I told the brother that day. The Hamitic hypothesis is is to also is to tell us. Hold on, hold on one second. The Hamitic hypothesis was used. Let me read this carefully and blow it up so the people on. My Facebook can see it here. The Hamitic hypothesis was used to explain away any important achievement in Africa because the European colonizers wanted to promote the myth of African cultural inferiority because this will help them to justify their occupation and colonization of Africa in terms of a civil, civilizing mission, which must necessarily involve a process of African cultural upliftment. This negative assumption based on a mistaken notion of what constitutes history, was reflected throughout the entire colonial period and is to be found in the writings and pronouncements of several European pseudoscientists like Perham, Copeland, Newton, among others. As a result of this, African history, like the African peoples themselves, was effectively colonized. Now, basically, family, let me just explain what I just read. The Hamitic hypothesis, what they did, family, is say that everything positive or genuine in Africa came from Israel, right? It came from who are we call the Hamites. The Hamite family were really white people originally. Before the 18th century, the 19th century, I'm sorry, Hamites were considered to be Caucasian people. A lot of people in the audience on sound might be shocked. They're like, what, what is Garfield talking about? Caucasian. Yes. They were considered to be Caucasian people because they were surprised that in West Africa, you had all these cultures that were built up, West African cultures that were positive images of Africans. So how did you, the Igbos do this? How did the Ashanti do this? You know what? They come from Israel. So what they did by colonizing us, by bringing us and giving us the Bible, they started to change what we were used to doing. They didn't have to change the writing because we didn't write. So they decided to change the oral traditions within the culture. And by using the Hamitic hypothesis, the only people in the culture that could really answer anything is the Ude, which is what? Which is the, 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 um, the, 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 the native um, indigenous, um, like the, the, the preacher or the, the, the person in charge of the system that they believe in. So the original people that of the land, they have stories within the culture that change. It's like the Igbo. The Igbo has a story that they come from where? That they come from Israel. But guess what? They said they come from Israel through the Sephardic. So we know the Sephardic are not original Aboriginal Jews. They are converts. So we already know that defeats the whole purpose of the Igbos right there. Because that's the only legitimate oral tradition that they have. But how did they get it? Because guess what? You have something called Luso African. Everybody say Luso Africans. L U S O dash Africans. Google it right now and look at the Wikipedia article and it tells you. The people who were from the Portuguese, 
who came over, the Sephardic Jews, who slept with African female, African tribal leaders' daughters to inter, inter, intermingle and become a mixed breed, which became, this is where the, 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 the black um, Jews, you could call those people black Jews or whatever you want to call them, but they were mixed because they wanted to trade with the people, so they slept with the daughters and then had children with them. So those mixed children now, the Luso Africans, the Lancados, all these different people are what you, 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 those Jews were controlling the trade network who developed the slave trade. So when you look at the, Rad, the Radanites or the Ibadi Jews or even the Majorcan Jews, these Jews family were the ones that set up the trade network in the, the Trans-Saharan trade or the Sub-Saharan trade. Look up the Radanites. They could speak multiple languages. They even traded all the way to China. This is how you know Jews were in China. And these Jews aren't us. They don't look like us. They weren't us. Eventually, when they started intermingling with the African culture, they started looking like us. But those Sephardic Jews weren't us originally. And they were the ones that financed the slave trade. So when you see these people going to culture now, they start adding. And that's where the oral tradition started to change. You had Christian missionaries and you had Jewish missionaries. They had a motive, family. They were doing, they were spreading their network. It's all about trade and trading Africans. Spice, gold, all these type of things, the cola nuts. All these things are traded because they're worth value. Then you have, you have the, sugar, the sugar industry, the sugar plantation, the sugar make molasses. Molasses is used to make rum. It's all about trade, and Jews were involved. Are you saying that you are those Jews? Come on, man. The Ashanti has a lot of culture, family, and you need to look at every single oral tradition. If you want to debate me on debate talk for you about oral traditions of the Ashanti, we could set that up. But don't come on here and say Garfield is double talking. Yes, there are tradi oral traditions that say, but it's because of the Hamedic hypothesis and because of colonization, brother. They change our oral tradition. And if you need sources, Inbox me on Facebook, and I'll send them to you, brother. So you are not going to agree with me because you just don't want to agree, but it doesn't matter. I'm glad I'm able to come on style and say my point of view, and if you want to contest it, set up a debate. I'm all for it. Thank you, sir. All right. We still have uh, the Shut Them Down crew, <laughs> Aparium and uh, Zaria standing by. However, we do have more room for everybody else that want to ask a question or a comment. You know that number, 319 Five two seven six two three nine. Once you dial that number, simply press number one, and we'll add you in a conversation. I'm going to let them respond to you, and after that, I'm going to move on to the next question. I do have some email questions as well, and I appreciate the family on social media that's spreading the show uh, on social media, on Facebook, Twitter. We appreciate you. Let's go to the shut them down group. Got you, got fellas. All right. Hey, yes. Uh, shalom, Sal. How you doing? Peace, peace and blessings, Garfield. This is Isaria. Peace, hey, peace and love, brother. Peace and love. Peace and love. All right. So, so yeah. Um, based on your what you said about the debate, we would gladly uh, accept that. We will definitely do that. I would love to set that up uh, with with uh, you and me and a poem or you know whoever you want to bring. Sound. You're a witness. We're ready to do that as soon as Garfield is ready. He put the challenge out there. We accept the challenge. I want to make that 100% clear right now. All right. Okay, that's the first point. Thank you. All right. Okay, good. So we, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a very, a very good debate. Now, the next thing I want to say, um, I would like to clarify about this Judean thing because the Judeans were, they, they were given that label by the Babylonians. Okay, and then we know that there was three tribes, mainly three tribes left there, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But I'm going to go fast forward to, to something that you mentioned, the Kittos War and, and, and the Bar Kova Revolt. After the Kittos War, I believe it was the Kittos War, there was a Roman emperor named Hadrian. And Hadrian banished all Israelites from returning back to Judea. That's, that's in the history. That's in Roman history. Hadrian, the Emperor Hadrian. Now, you had a large community of Israelites going back before the time of Christ in, uh, in Egypt. You had them in Libya. You had them in, uh, in Sudan. 
going below Egypt, in the southern part of Egypt. You also have a, a place called Elephantine Island, okay, that there is a, 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 a temple of the Jews on Elephantine Island. So the trade routes, you mentioned something about the trade routes and all that. The Nile River runs all the way from Uganda north all the way up to the Nile Delta. The river, everyone knows that a river, you have civilizations all along a river. Anytime there's a main waterway, you're going to have towns and cities and so on and so forth. Now, how is it it's so impossible for the Israelites to continue over hundreds of years? Now, this didn't happen in just 20 years, 30 years. Over hundreds of years, continue to migrate down into the interiors of Africa. When I study books like the African Slave Trade, I study books like A History of West Africa, and that's just from 1,000 to 1,800. It shows you clearly that these people migrated. The trade routes were vast. The Sahara Desert was not like how it is now. So what do you, what's your response to that? Hey, Garfield, are you there? I'm sorry, I, I muted my mic. Um, I'm going to ask the brother one question, and I'm going to shut, okay. shut, shut, shut them down cool right now. Can you okay. prove anybody, anybody ever called any Judean, uh, can you prove the Judeans consider themselves as Israelites? Give me a primary source on that. Tell me one man that ever said, hold on, listen to the question carefully, because I'm going to shut, shut them down crew right now. Give me one mm-hmm. primary source that any Judean ever said they were an Israelite. The Bible, brother. You know that's, that's my number the one Bible. source, so, the Bible. You, Do you know what a primary source is? Do you know what a primary source is? Do you have the primary primary source? source, Okay. The primary source is the direct source. That means the original writing. You don't have the Bible in original writing. There is no such thing as a Judean being an Israelite. That is an invention, the biblical text. No Judean in history. Okay, so so you don't believe in the Bible, but I do. So we already agree with that. Hold up, brother. Hold up. I ask you one question, Mr. Shut him down, crew. I ask you one question. I said, can you show me a primary source? You don't even know what a primary source is. So you see, that doesn't matter. My source, you, my source is the Bible. My source is the Bible. You don't have a primary right, Do you have the primary source of the biblical text? Show me the primary source then. Show me the original Bible. When you read it, when you read it in no. Hebrew and in where Greek, is the that's original the primary source. Bible. No. Where is the original text? Show me the primary source. You don't God have feels. it. Listen, God feels. Don't All you're trying to do is the Bible. Because Judeans are not Israelites. They are not you Israelites. Only in the biblical yeah, but, story. God feels yeah, that you remember. Can't, you can't say what I'm saying about Hadrian is not true. What about Hadrian? Okay, okay, Hadrian okay family. Let me degree? respond. Okay, let me respond to you. Let me respond. Can I respond to you, brother? Can I respond yeah, to right. you? All right. So now the brother said, right? All right. I'm going to say this to the brother. Um, hold on one second. Let me just read this carefully before I even read anything out. All right. So the brother said that the, um, the, the elephantine, um, people on elephantine island. Um, I don't know if the brother has read a translation of the elephantine papyri. What he's talking about is 404 BCE. There was a writing of some Jews, alleged Jews, um, living in um, Elephantine Island. All right. Now, in that writing, right, and I could just bring this up on my computer and just throw some daggers right now, but this is for the people. I'm not concerned about the shut them down. You know why I'm not concerned about them? I'm not concerned about them because they are believers and they are in this world. For them to come out of this world is going to take hours of, of scholarship and time consuming. I'm not here to change their minds. But I want the people. Well, don't run from the debate now. Hold on, hold on, my brother. Why are you inter? Yo, Sal, you, you said they wasn't let them talk and done with them. I'm, I'm done with them. I'll just respond. We don't need to hear from them anymore. I'm good. Right, you got, Have a good night. Guys. All right. Let me just let me just respond. Let me just respond to them about the Hadrian. If you read the history about Hadrian, 
he killed them, all of them. According to their records, he killed all of them. That's what Hadrian did. He killed all the Jews because the Jews killed a bunch of Roman soldiers and were winning. They went to North Africa and Egypt and killed them all. That's what his records say. And that's the only records that we have. So what is he talking about? Go and Google it for yourself, family. Go and Google the, 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 the Kittas War. How, how are you going to make a statement that the Jews went to this and they went to the Sahel and they got trade routes? Nobody's disputing trade routes. That is common knowledge, family. And who ran the trade route? Jewish merchants. Are you those people? Because they finance the trans-Saharan slave trade with the Arabs. Are you those people? Are you the descendants of those people? Come on, family. Listen, family. There's no evidence that any Judean ever called themselves an Israelite. There's no record, no record anywhere. Persian, well, no Persian records really exist like that. But no Assyrian record. No, there's no record that Judeans were called Israelites. Let me say that clearly. There is no record, no record, no primary source that says that Judeans were ever considered a part of anything called the 12 tribes of Israel. It does not exist. Judeans are Judeans. That's what they are. In the Roman time period, Judeans changed. It now included Edom and all of Syria. This is why they had to do a census at 6 or 7 AD with Quirinius. It's in Luke. So don't come on here, shut them down, crew, and get shut down, because that's what Dagger Squad does. All right, but if you read up on the Kittas War again, family, just to respond, I don't want you to say, "Oh, you don't scared to respond about Hadrian." Hadrian kill all of them all, kill them all, kill off my soldiers and skin off their skins and start wearing their skins as jackets like a trophy. Well, you think I'm gonna I'm let you live? And that's what Hadrian did. He killed them off. So the North African Jews at that time were killed off. All right, according to the records, just just to make that clear, and also. Again, family, no, the elephantine pepper, we got to study it. And the reason why we got to study it, me and my brother, Divine Prospect, it, had a debate one day, and, and I had to point out to him that when they said they were getting the Passover in, um, in the elephantine pepper, or whatever they said they were going to do, it was Darius the king that ordered them, commanded them. Line 10 says it. Line 10 says Darius commanded them to do the Passover. It was not a Hebrew or a Jewish call. And another dagger for the elephantine papyrus, they used the term ikiru, which is an Akkadian word for temple. If they were Jews, why they, and they, and, they, and if the Judeans were speaking Hebrew, we find Hebrew documents in the 6th century BC of, of people in Judea writing in Hebrew. So if you're writing in Hebrew and you went to Elephantine Island or Elephantine, why are you writing in Acadian now if you are a Judean? <laughs> Come on, man. What's wrong with them, Sal? They don't know I'm the Dagger Squad. Come on, man. Stop that, man. Stop that. Stop that. Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> You better call Divine Prospect tonight. Call somebody with, with a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, I know you were still talking. <laughs> All right, once again, it's the Hot Seat segment right here on the Bay Talk Radio. That number to call in is 319-527-6239. I see the call is out there. I'm going to get to you. And uh, once you can send me an email as well at debatetalkview at gmail.com for those who don't want to call in, but you still have a question, again, it's debatetalk, the number four, and the letter U at gmail.com. I just want, want everybody to know, if it's your first time listening to the show, anybody can call in. Anybody can call in. As long as you keep it clean, keep it professional, there's no foul language. Let's go to the next caller, though. Let's go to 504-485. You're live on air. Yeah, how you doing, Sal? How you doing, uh, Brother Garfield? Uh, hey, peace and love, brother. No doubt, no doubt, my man. Uh, no, I appreciate you coming on the high seat. You know, I've been listening to what you've been saying. But my question is, well, first, like, it seems that like what's like what's your purpose? I don't really want to know why, but I'm just leading into everything I, I'm about to ask you, or at least what I'm about to comment to go against everything you're saying. Because 
that is a heavy tradition of Israelites being in West Africa, starting from Ghana, actually. Uh, the founder of Ghana was a man named Dinga Sisi, and he had a son called Diamin El, Diamin El Yaman, and that actually means from above Yemen. So when you look closely and when you search, and it seems like you know a lot, but it seems like you really stop searching at certain points because the Arab slave trade, which was before the European slave trade, decimated all culture and all civilization in West Africa. So to look at our sources, the first one being the Bible, and then secondary sources like uh, the, the, the Book of Sudan, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, or even Bilad, I, I hear Bilad, you talk Bilad, about Bilad al Sudan. Bilad al Sudan. Right. You know what you're talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. That 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 speaks of us having patriarchs coming from Israel. So you know how you you know dis disregard um, the book of El Dan Hadani. That's false. So I'm just trying to see like what do you accept? Like do an uh, Israelite okay. gotta come and shove the book in your face? Or I don't know. I don't understand. Like, All right. Hold, hold, on, hold yeah. on a second, brother. You said you said the book called by Elder Danny, right? All right. Cool. Right. Can I can I can, can you hold on for a second? I want to make a quick point about something else, real quick. All right. I'm gonna respond right. to you in a quick second. All right. Because I have a book about right. Elder Danny. I'm gonna bring out now for those who are on who are on Facebook who could see my screen. Right. I want y'all to look at this real quickly here. I want to make I want to make a point. Um, we have to be careful, right? And you know what? Let me forget about the, the elephantine papa, right? I'm going to forget about that. Let's forget about that. Shut him down. Food. Let me deal with the brother right now. So what I'm going to do, family, because what we do, family, we read books. And when you read books, you get to see a lot of truth you don't see when you don't read books. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, the Lost Tribes, right? The Lost Tribes of Israel is the name of this book, right? And what the brother does, he talks about um, El Dada Danai. And there's a chapter about this brother named El Dada Danai. And I want, I, want to, I want to read something in that book so that the brother has clarity. You see, brah, we could go by gossip, but with the Dagger Squad, we read books, all right? And there's a whole chapter in El Dada Danai. And I know just by your conversation, you said, so, brother, even if we put it in your face, I just don't think you want to search. So you're judging me before you don't know what I know or what I don't no, know. No, because and I I've don't heard think... you speak before, and I okay. know how you I operate. Don't think, I don't the think, brother, I don't brother... think. What are right, hold on. Have you ever read Eldad, have you ever read Eldad the Danite information, or are you just going by what you know? You, and, no, you know what's funny? And that's one thing I would thank somebody who's, who claims to be a student yourself should see. All of those books that that come pre-imperial colonialism, they don't translate them to English. If I'm not mistaken, you cannot find an El Dad Hadani book in English. You know why? Because we are starting to read those books. You got to go to German, or you go to you got to go to Arabic. All of those are in Arabic or in different languages. Okay. So no, I haven't read it. All right. Now to to and to to the brother's point, and for those who are on Facebook, I'm gonna share my screen. This is this is this is the issue here, right? El Dada Danai, if you ask the brother, anybody who ever read about El Dada Danai, how would you know about El Dada Danai if it was never translated in English? All right. Let me ask a rhetorical question. Is there a Christian version to El Dada Danai and a Jewish version? I'm gonna say yes. There's two different versions. Now, I can't read German, so of course I would have to read English. So I'm reading from a book. The book is called The Ten Lost Tribes of World History, written in 2009, right? Now, there's a chapter, chapter three, called Tricksters and Travelers, and I want people to pay attention to what I'm saying. The issue with El Dad the Danite is this. One, brother, are you going to say you yeah. got El Dad the Danite in English or what, or don't you? Hold on, hold on brother. I'm reading from a yeah. book, a scholar who has had the information. Whether it was in English or not is irrelevant. That's totally irrelevant. That's the point you're trying to that's make. That's irrelevant. That's, ir- that's a cop-out. That's a cop-out, bro, because that means you can't refer to it. How do you know it's true? You just kill your own argument. 
Brother man, when I speak on oh, Eldad you, Hadani, you I'm speaking on people who've read those books. But at oh, the same time, so who, who, who's, the, who's the person? That, no, I'm gonna stop you in that lie right now. Who do you know that read it? Read it? Read it? Who do you know? My brother, there's plenty of sources on the internet I could pull up, and they can tell that, you what it is. That's say. why I'm pulling up a book of somebody who has read Eldad the Danite. That's what I'm doing on my screen right now, on Facebook. What, okay, and where you at right now, Garfield? What you I'm, doing at where all? Where am I going? You see how crazy you sound? You on the internet, I actually, right? I actually have the link, uh, Gideon, on my uh, description box. If you go to Blog Talk Radio, uh, I have the uh-huh. link right there. Or, I, or matter of fact, I'll just your friend him on Facebook. I'll just send it to you. I see you the link right. on his Facebook. Okay. Okay. Right. That. Well, what's what's saying to El Dad Hadani since we don't have that primary source there? Speak on what I was okay. speaking let me, of. Let me, let me, of bro, hold on. Let me respond to you first before you you do right. anything. Because first and foremost, people need to understand the story. What El Dad the Danite is doing, he's basically telling these people, right? Say, hey, you know what, man? While I was was here, I met some people who were a part of a tribe. How do you know? He's telling the truth or he's lying. What folks have to do is you have to go into what he's saying and look, because he's supposedly writing in Hebrew or a certain type of Hebrew. And what happened is the linguistic experts trace Eldad the Danite to a certain sect of Hebrews based on what he said. Because remember, the Danites allegedly in the Bible weren't a part of the exilic Israelites. Remember, they were already gone. So certain teachings he should not have known or be a part of because it happened after Babylonian exile. He was extremely familiar with a lot of the teachings after the Babylonian exile, showing that he couldn't have been a Danite in the first place. That's the first simple thing. The second thing is he now runs around and say, okay, um, um, hold on a second. Let me, let, me, let me just read this carefully. An unusual, colorful judge who always fought Israel's war alone as an individual. Samson's wars. With the Philippines, da, da 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 da. All right, hold on. Let me um. And uh, get in. You can check your Facebook. You can you can check your messenger. I I gave you the link to the Facebook. You can check your messenger on Facebook. Okay, I'm on it. But yeah, like like I was saying, also like we don't need to stay with just one source because, like I say, there are plenty of places in West Africa that still keep Israelite names. Are you, are you familiar with Ola Musa? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, my issue, are you, my are, issue is, my issue is, hold on a second. You know How what Ola Musa means? No, 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 no. This is what I'm going to do. It means because because of Moses. You're, hold, so, hold on, hold on, hold on. So how, because you're under, my brother, my brother, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Because right. somebody said their name is Moses, what does that mean? Oh, what does see, it mean? Now you just not not it's like because mer- Jewish merchants was I just, talk, I just talked about the Luso Africans. I just talked the about the Portuguese Jews. I just talked about the the, the, the Radonite Jews. I just talked about the network. They controlled the whole network, bro. They were in Timbuktu. They were the merchants. They had money. They controlled the slave trade. It's not you, my brother. Don't you know the infiltration of the Jews was just as much oh as the God. same Jesus. as the infiltration of the colonists? What come seriously? What talk. was the first? What was the first country in Europe to come into West Africa? Portugal, right? What was the first place Jews were expelled? European Jews, Portugal. So don't I mean, when you say this word Jew, you're not saying an Israelite. Jewish is a religion that started in Babylon. It had Medes, it had Persians, it had Israelites, it had all types of people included into it. And when the term Jew, Judean, came around. It was during Roman hegemony. So when you're trying to say nobody nobody except Rome called them Jews, it was because Judah wasn't really around that time. It was Israel that was around that time. And when they fought Rome, that was the biggest war that ever happened till that point. So I don't understand these facts, where these facts you speak come from. You brothers, y'all just speak, and y'all just have sources from dudes that wrote a book two days ago, and y'all expect us to believe that. Now, if we go by scripture, we go by a book that was written by Africans about Africans, and that's what we go by. And I don't understand why y'all have a problem with that. You know, y'all want to, but that's, that's, that's all I have to say, Sal. Thank you for your time, and, you know, y'all, okay. peace. Yeah. Hey, peace and love, brother, and thank you for the phone call, all right? 
for those who are on my um, Facebook, Tricksters and Travelers, this guy, this guy, El Daddy Danite, man. I'm going to do a whole show about him, man. Don't worry about it. I, I got I got this. El Daddy Danite is one of the biggest frauds in the history of Jews. Nobody's disputing if he's a Jew. I'm not disputing that. I'm just disputing his story. Because what makes his story true or not, you got to go into the writing. You got to go into what he's talking about. Um, hold on a second. Let me, um, let me just read a, a quick thing off of this. A modern incarnation of Samson, Eldad provided a riveting account of his adventures. Going forth from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, I and the Jew of the tribe of Asher entered a small ship to trade. Suddenly, a great wind erupted and the ship was wrecked. The two clung to a box until they landed at the last on a shore where they were caught by the Romanos, who are black Ethiopians, tall, without garment of clothing upon them, likened to beasts, and they eat human beings. The Romanos proved to be voracious but rational cannibals. They, told, they, they, they took hold of us, and seeing that my companion was fat and healthy and pleasing, slaughtered and ate him. But me they took for I was sick on board ship, and they put me in chains until I should get fat and well, and they brought me all kinds of good but forbidden food, but I ate nothing, and I hid the food. And when they asked me if I had eaten, I answered, yes, I have eaten. Eldad was imprisoned by quite some time until the Lord performed a miracle. His captors were defeated by a great army that came upon them from another place. The mysterious army then took him, took him captive themselves. Eldad told his Qurani host that his new captors were wicked men. And, you know, throughout the whole thing, it's just a bunch of stories that's just super crazy. You know, people have not read it. And this is what I want people to do. Read stuff and evaluate it yourself. Stop taking these people you see on YouTube and whatever. Read the books yourself. If anybody wants this book, man, it, 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 there's no price for it. Just inbox me and I'll email it to you. And you read the chapter yourself. These are primary sources in it. Eldad the Danite is a fraud, family. He's a fraud. My words are not good enough, so I want you to read it for yourself. He's a fraud. It's not that he never existed. He is just a fraud, just like Presta John. Presta John never existed, but they intertwined Presta John and Eldad the Danite. He was written 880 AD. The first writing of Eldad the Danite was, came out 600 years later. 600 years later, anything can happen. People could intermingle. Writings could be mixed up. People could put whatever they want. And that's why they have a Christian version and a Jewish version, because both sides were claiming him because they had use for his information on what he said. They're trying to say, okay, Jew, the anti-Jewish Christian, they, they brought him in, and then the Jews say, hey, you see, they had Jews all over the place. So these lost tribes you're looking for is based off of this guy. You don't even know what he's saying is true. We got to do better, man. And this, this guy, was he a black African Jew, like what y'all claim, or was he a white guy? Come on, family. We got to do better, man. Benjamin Tadella, he's another trickster. We got to look into these writings and see what these folks are doing. Evaluate it. Stop believing, family. If you just believe in the Bible, let's believe in the Bible. Don't try to quote sources and you never read it. For the brother to bring up Eldad the Danite and then say, oh, um, there was no English version. So why are you bringing him up? You see, you see the craziness, family? That's just crazy. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Sal. Take another call. All right, family, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. That's 319-527-6239. For those just joining in, this is the Hot Seat segment of Debate Talk for You Radio, where anybody can call in live and ask your questions. My special guest is Garfield Reed, representing the Dagger Squad. Again, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. Once you dial that number, simply press number 1. And we'll add you to the conversation, or you can send me an email at debate talk for you at gmail.com. That's debate talk the number four and the letter U at gmail.com. By the way, family, we have like 22 minutes on the air. We have 22 minutes on the air. So this is your opportunity to ask your questions or forever hold your peace. Again, my special guest is Garfield Reed. Uh, let's go to the next caller. Let's go to 716 541. You're live on air. Thank you for taking my call. I'm not really clear on what he's saying. Are, are you saying that that Israelites are no more or never were? I, I don't understand what you're saying, sir. Okay. All right. Just for clarity, there there is record 
that I've that I've that I've studied and seen for myself that they were a people called Israel. Now I don't believe the biblical Israel and the historical Israel are the same. I don't believe that. I believe that the, the ancient Israelites were a people that lived in a region that was recognized between around 830 B.C. to around 800 B.C. After that, the term Israel, we don't even find it mentioned in history until like around the 4th century A.D. So there weren't people running around calling people Israelites. What we find in the writing is that there's a group of people called Israelites who were special and had a special covenant with God, according to the writing. But we also find writings in Greek and in other cultures that they have writings that say that they have a special covenant with God. So now I'm saying they had prophecies. They can line up with me and you too. But the point is, I don't take the Bible literally. It's considered in, in scholarly circles as historical fiction. And that's what I consider it. Saying that ancient Israelites lived and we're descendants of them, I do not believe that. I don't believe that to be true. That's based all on faith. Well, um, when you read the book of Genesis, when it talks about um, Abraham and his sons, and Jacob had 12 sons, and, and when people say, say Jew, that means that's talking about Judah. They're, they were one whole tribe, but when the kingdom got split, they became two. But as a whole, they were all one tribe, and Judah is because Judah and Benjamin and Levi, I think, are considered to be uh, what they call Jews. And Israel is is separate, although they were t- 12 tribes. Hey, sister, they, they were, can, I ask a, can I ask a quick question while you're saying that? Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt mm-hmm. you, by the way. I apologize. Is that based mm-hmm. on your biblical understanding? I have no other choice but to go with a biblical understanding, especially since it was written in 1513 BCE. You know, the okay. first book was recorded then, 1513 okay. BCE. That's pretty ancient, right? Okay. But let me, let, me, let me say this, though. I don't think anybody right now in the academic circles, not saying I, don't, I want to step on your toes because I don't know who you are. You could be a scholar. You could be somebody in the academic field. I have never heard anyone in the academic field say that Genesis was written 1513. I'm going to give a quick example. No, it was recorded. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no problem, sis. What I'll say is this. In Genesis 36, 31, right, they talk about Edomite kings. Edomite kings did not start to exist as a people until the 8th century B.C. So the writers, the people who look at the Bible, there's something called textual criticism. So they're saying that this part of that biblical text in Genesis could not be written before 800 B.C. because there were no Edomite kingdom kings before that. But although Genesis mentioned it, we know at that point they did not exist. So there's something called, again, I repeat, textual criticism, where we look inside the text at certain kings, certain names, and we say, okay, this wasn't used until 7th century, so maybe the writer wrote it at this time. So that's why I don't, it's like the term Chaldean. Chaldeans was used for Abraham, Ur of Chaldees, but Chaldeans didn't come in the area until like around 9th century BCE. So that means whoever wrote it, physically wrote it, wrote it at that time when Chaldean was known as Chaldees. So that's what they do to date the actual text. All right? That's what is called textual criticism. But you don't have to follow that. Okay, because but, but, you but what does the, Bible. the Edomites have to do with us? I, I, I mean, with Israel. What does, why are you telling me about Edomites? Because the Edomites never existed in, in history until the 8th century BCE. But they are mentioned in Genesis. Sister, let me finish. They are mentioned in Genesis as being, and you said Genesis was written 1513 BCE. So I'm saying to you, how could, it be, how could it be written in 1513 if the Edomites never existed until the 8th century BCE? When I, well, I know, that, because the Edomites, I, that's what I'm saying, that's like um, a red herring or whatever, because Edomites have nothing to do with Genesis. Edomites don't come along until um, Esau, you know what I mean? And that was just a land, you know what I mean? It was like red dirt or whatever, so they gave him the name of uh, the, the red and the red suit. It, 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 I don't understand what you're saying, sir. All right, no problem. 
I'm basically saying that if you go to Genesis 36 right now, you, you made a statement at the beginning that Genesis was written 1513 BCE. I said to you, if we go to Genesis 36, verses, I think, 31, it goes to the rulers of Edom. These were the kings who reigned in Edom before any Israelite king reigned. Bela, son of Beor, became king of Edom. His city was Dinhamba. When Bela died, Jobab, da 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 I'm saying to you that Edom, that kingdom called Edom, never existed until the 8th century BCE. So there's no way the writer could write 1513 and write about them when they never existed. So it had to be written after the time they existed. That is my point. No, no, that's not a good point. Because Esau is the (laughs) uh, progenitor of the Idumeans today and Edom. So... Okay, sis. I, I hear you. Right? I hear you, sis. So, I hear you. All right, thank you. But I'm just I was just trying to figure out what the Edomites have to do with Israelites. Now, you can check in for yourself and you'll see that according to the record, Genesis was recorded in fifteen thirteen BCE. Okay, sis. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to debate that point. Have a beautiful night, and thanks for the phone call. Very respectful. like that. All right, family, once again, uh, this is uh, the hot seat right here on the Bay Talk Radio. Uh, we have four minutes left on the air. And listen, if, you, if it's your first time listening to the show, once that time runs out, if we have to, we're going to go into the overtime part of the show. So, again, if you have any questions or comments, this is your time. <laughs> My special guest is Garfield Reed. Once again, that number is 319-527-6239. We have 14 minutes on the air. If you're listening on social media, if you're listening on Blog Talk Radio, once that time runs out, in order to hear the rest of the show live, you're going to have to call in. Again, call in via phone, via Skype, before the time runs out. Well, let's go to the next caller. Let's go to 443-815. You're live on air. Uh, uh, Garfield... This is uh, Brother Mercy. Uh, What I wanted to say is that it appears that a lot of what you say is in the world of partial truths. And what what I mean by that is that, like, I heard these arguments all the time. The white man gave us the Bible to control us, and that's totally not true. Now, at one point, that was true with Nat Turner when they appointed a slave to teach us Bible studies, but prior to that, we were not allowed to read and write at, at all. They didn't want us reading. They didn't want us writing. They didn't want us being educated. So I, I don't get this whole thing about the Bible was used to trick us when there was a point when they didn't want us reading no books. But then there came a time they saw it profitable to have Nat Turner, I'm pretty sure you know about that, control the Bible studies. And then they had one person to teach us, but they didn't have us reading the Bible. We still couldn't read. We had to believe what Nat Turner told us. So I, I, I still don't get this whole thing about they gave us the Bible to control us, because to me that that's not true. You know, they didn't want us reading. They didn't, all they wanted us to do was out there picking cotton and working for them as slaves and being dumb, educated niggas. That's what they wanted for us. I mean, so I don't get this. They gave us books because the white man ain't never gave us no books. Okay, so we had to sneak around and learn and. And um, what they call corrugate, because if if you notice, religion is illegal for a slave. It's, it's illegal for a slave to have religion. So the whole thing to use religion to enslave people is is kind of is oxymoron because it's illegal if you study slave law for slaves to have religion. So I mean, again, part of your argument, I've heard these arguments before. I think it comes from a source of I hate religion, and I'm just gonna find everything wrong with it. Just to try to prove it, and history is one of your excuses. And you've already admitted that history has been manipulated, but you still use history to support your argument, but you say history has been manipulated. So, I, again, you defeat yourself with all your arguments because your arguments really make no sense because you can't say religion is used to enslave people when it's illegal for slaves to have religion. That's even today. When you go to, really, you're not even supposed to, when you go to jail, you're not supposed to have religion. You're not supposed to congregate. That's illegal. But do they let people do it? Yeah, but you really have that's why you got individual sales. You're not supposed to really have religion when you're enslaved. But I just want to know what your thoughts on to that. 
about religion and slavery and how religion can be used to enslave people when it's illegal illegal for slaves to have religion. And then this whole idea about they gave us books when that's totally against what the historical record says. So that's what I have. All right. Um, I think a lot of comments you make, yeah, I, I can't even laugh. I'm, I'm going to be respectful. Let me, let me say this. Um, I don't know what he's quoting me from, but I did mention that the Congo, the Congo, if you look at the Congo people, they were the first people to get the Bible from the Portuguese, right? You see, whenever we got the Bible, the Bible played a role that it never played a role like that before ever in history. And we need to understand it. The job of the Bible was to basically remove our African culture totally from us so we could forget it. But it never worked. So the brother said that when the people came over here, they weren't practice, we weren't allowed to practice religion. That is not true. Because the Akan people, we have the, the Igbos, we have different examples within this country, even the Gullah people. We have different examples of people practicing their own religion within this country. So that defeats that whole argument about practicing religion. Whether they like you to do it or not is not the issue. The issue is they practice their own religion. Muslims came over and practiced religion. You had the people from the Akan, the Igbo, the Yoruba people. You had all type of people come over and practice their ancient African culture. Now, I, I want to say this. When the Congo, when the people, um, the Congo people went to um, the Portugal, right, they were trained in the Bible, and they liked it. It's like they cut a deal. So they went back to, the, to Congo and taught the people Christianity, and that's how Congo became the first Christian culture, Christian nation, right? This was like around 1491. Now, the issue is not America right now. We're talking about the root of this issue because we didn't have no Bible in West Africa before the Portuguese gave it to us, all right? So we need to be careful of that. There was no Bible floating around for over almost 1,000 years. They couldn't have it in public. So what Bible? There's no Bible. There's no put-together Bible. Then you had the guy in England, 13-something, he put a Bible together, and they killed him and tore that Bible up. Then you had the King James Version. King James Version, he made his version to make it helpful for folks on the England to understand certain things. Now let me ask, you, ask the brother this, if he's still on the line. How do you trace your roots back to 2,700 years to Israel. How did how did the Israelites get into Africa? How did they get into West Africa? We want to claim all these cultures, but we don't want to give these cultures any any um credit for them doing what they're doing. The Nak culture. Israelites wasn't in Nigeria when the Nak culture was there with the terracotas and all that stuff. Israelites weren't there. The Nak culture was a prominent culture. Wagadu, which is what Ghana was called before it was called Ghana, and it used to be further up north than where, where Ghana is today. That's where the Akan folks were before they shifted down to where Ghana is today. We need to understand West African culture, their rituals, and respect them and stop picturing, putting all these stupid pictures and where you don't understand the culture, and then you downgrade it because the bottom line is we don't want to be African. So what we do is we adopt the Oriental hypothesis that anything great that was built up in the culture had to come from Israel. This was a Hamitic hypothesis. They have the Oriental hypothesis talking about they came, some of them came from Egypt. If they ain't come from Israel, they come from Egypt. They couldn't come from Africa because guess what? Africans can't do jack shit. I'm sorry, Sal, I need to curse. They can't do nothing. So all of this family is to take us away from our original culture. That's all it is. It ain't got nothing to do with no book or history. And then what we do is we try to make every excuse to believe in this book. And if I ask the brother who wrote the book, he can't tell me. When it was written, he can't tell me. What year was Nehemiah written in? What year was Nahum written in? Who wrote Genesis? Who wrote Exodus? Who wrote this? You, nobody, nobody in the community can answer. It's all based on faith. And that's what they taught us from when they taught the, the people in Congo. They gave us the book. Then the Jews come in and they put their little mix on it and give you a sprinkle a little bit of Hebrewisms on it. We need to stop this game, family. You cannot trace your roots back to Israel. You can't. You cannot do that. All you can do is say, I believe in the book, 
but you don't know who wrote the book. When Hashar, Hashar before the Unity Conference on August 12th, he said that, why are they talking about nobody could write the book and who print the book? And I said to myself, when I went up there, I said, but when anything is being written about this book, there's always some other empire in charge. You have Assyrians in charge, Persians in charge, Babylonians in charge, Greeks in charge, Romans in charge. The only time you guys controlled the writing was during the Maccabean period. For 100 years between 163 AD, BC and 60 BC. And that's when a lot of the prophecies were put in. The ap apocalyptic writing were put in place. So you can't, you got to look at history, family, and you got to look at the biblical text, and they got to look at external evidence and archaeology. That's how you come to a conclusion. But if you just come to the conclusion because something sounds good and there's a promise of, hey, you know what, a wait and see program. I'm going to wait for Jesus to come back. I'm going to wait for this to come back. Because you know what, this person died because of a curse. You know how I feel? When I hear Hebrew Israelites go around and say, oh, that person died because of a curse? How, what happened to, to the brother? I, 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 no disrespect to the brother in South Carolina. When he got killed by the white woman, was that a curse? But every time somebody black dies, you say it's a curse. And no disrespect to the brother that died. I'm not trying to show shade. I'm just trying to show and make a point. This is what Hebrew Israelites do. You spew anti-African rhetoric morning, noon, and night. And that was the purpose of the Bible to get you out of your culture and replace it with their culture that they gave you, either it was Christianity with the Bible or whatever, Hebrewism. It's not our culture, family. It has never been. This is a new culture that's coming in, and this is how they control people. This is why you have groups like the ISSAJ that go around and say, oh, you know what, you're a Jew. You're a Jew. Collecting money, rabbis collecting money in Israel to make people in Ethiopia or somebody in, in Zimbabwe or somebody in Tanzania. Oh, hey, we got Jewish, man. We don't eat. We, 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 do, we, we celebrate the Sabbath, so we, 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 we Hebrews. Come to think of it, they went over there and said, oh, you know what? Y'all are Hebrews now. This is what the ISSAJ do right now. They're the modern-day missionaries that go around and make people Jews. So listen, family, we are not, I'm not going to argue with the brother. You already have your mind made up. But I'm going to go by anthropology, archaeology, history, external evidence, and if it coordinates and agrees with the Bible, I will agree with it. So it's not like the Bible, I shut the Bible totally and say, hey, everything is wrong in the Bible. I'm just saying that the, the whole Hebrew Israelite doctrine is based off of Jacob. Academic circles, even my brother, um, Divine Prophet Consanita, he said it, he said, if you're going to have a historical argument or a, a, a argument about the biblical literature, it's two different arguments. Because Jacob is not considered to be a historical person in academic circles by the consensus. So if he's not considered a real person, how could you be a descendant of somebody that's not real? And to the sister that called before, she made a statement about Abraham and different stories. Do you know, though, that same story about, about, about Jacob and Isaac in, in the womb or whoever was in the room, in the womb, battling? There's a, another culture that had the same exact story line. Same exact storyline because it's literary fiction. We're the only ones that's taking this stuff serious, family, and say, yeah, that must be true because it's in the Bible. And we can't tell you who wrote the Bible, when it was written, by which person, what's his name, but we believe in the book. And this book has come to the hands of white folks from 400, from, from when? From 800 BC, come all the way around. It doesn't matter when the book was written. It has only been in the hands of people who are Judeans for 100 years, 100 years, from 160 BC to 60 BC. That's the only time y'all had control over this book. But you trust this book in the hands of Romans, in the hands of Persians, the Byzantine Empire, the Arabs, whoever control over this book was not you, but you trust this book today. So all the way from, from, from then till now, you don't know what happened with the manuscript, who had this one, who had that one, who rewrote it, who did this. They had a vote in, 15, in the 1500s, they had a vote, 38 to 533, for certain books to be in the Bible. White folks was doing that. You ain't had nothing to do with that. Ain't no Israelite there. Was there an Israelite on the, on, in, in that ecumenical council, the Council of Trent? Was there any Hebrew Israelite there? Because if there wasn't, how are you going to tell me the book is the word of God and you didn't play any role in putting it together? This book is it's very coordinated. Read about the hexapla with origin. 
how he put the six, the seven, six or seven manuscripts and made up his own thing so that the, the New Testament and the Old Testament would match up. Come on, family, we got to study these things. Why is it? And this is the most important thing I'm going to say tonight, because Deuteronomy 28, 68 is the biggest verse for a lot of these folks who are very religious. Why is it that the Bible that we have, the Codex Sinaitica, is the oldest script of the entire Bible together? And Deuteronomy 28 in the Codex Sinaitica does not read the way it reads today in English. It's a total different translation. It ain't got nothing to do with ships. It ain't got nothing to do with that. And guess what? The Codex Sinaitica comes from the Septuagint. The Septuagint leads up to what? The Greek version of the Bible is the one that the, 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 um, Jerome did. And Jerome's Latin Vulgate is what influenced the King James Version. So how did Deuteronomy 28:68 change from what the Codex Sinaitica says to what it is today? Who did that? It was no Israelite. It was either English, Roman, Arab, whoever. It was no Israelite there. So how is it you trust a book that has been in the hands of the enemy for years, hundreds of years, even thousands of years? That. All right, I got to jump in real quick. We only have a couple seconds left, family. <laughs> you got to have to call in right away. That number is 319-527-6239. We're going to the overtime part of the show. Please dial that number. We got some more people that will have questions, so make sure you call in, 319 527 Six two three nine. Uh, by the way, Garfield, we still have Brother Mercy. I, I know, I know, I know. She asked him a question. Did you want to respond to that, or you want to move on to the next person? You could move on. Okay, let's go to the next person. Let's go to four one two 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 five. You're live in there. Uh, shalom, 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 hey, shalom, peace and love, brother. All right, what's happening? This is Madonna Comet. Yeah, um, I got a question for the brother Garfield. Um. He said there wasn't no Hebrews or this and that at the time of the Council of Nicaea. But um, what the brother failed to realize is um, he haven't checked out what they call the um, the Chalcedonian Creed. You know, it was a council that took place before the Council of Nicaea, and it was the reason why the Council of Nicaea was took place because you had Jews and Israelites coming from Ethiopia, from Alexandria, and all kind of areas. You know what I mean? Disputing what they was trying to do during the council on last year. Hey, peace and love, by the way, my name commit. Long time, brother. Long time. Peace and oh, love. no doubt. Peace and love, What's been happening, bro? Peace and love, brother. Do you have a source that says that they said that Israelites were there, brother? Well, the thing, how would we know they're Israelites because a lot of these people from Ethiopia, and, you know, they go by um, the 12 tribes, the tribe of Judah and stuff like that. So that put proof that these um Bishops, whether they was direct descent or direct connected to the Israelites, because we know a lot of people joined on to it. You see what I'm saying? So whether they were directly Israelites or not, they were still there. You see what I'm saying? Because I think you had like three, four hundred different bishops that attended um, this um, this creed during this um, council. All right, cool. I I don't know um, if you have read on the the council last year or you're just going by something you heard. But I, I want to know what source says that Israelites were there. I want I want to see that source. I want to see that source well, and tell me where to find it. The second thing is, let me finish, brother. The second thing is um, Ethiopians, and we got to be careful because remember, under Izana, the Ethiopians he came in. It was a Christian culture. It wasn't a Jewish culture. They were considered Christians, and I hope you can agree with that right now. Are you saying that Izana was not a Christian because he was taught by Fermentus, who was a Christian teacher? So I'm asking you because Izana was a Christian teacher. So you saying that the Ethiopians were Jews and Israelites sounds like more like propaganda, not backed by facts. So I would like for you to explain to me how Izana, who was the king at the time, how did the people who follow Izana and Christianity become Jews and Israelites? Because that's what you said. Well, what I said was, we'll see the thing about it, Garfield. Um, if they're Christians, that means they're, they're they were the followers of the Messiah in the in the work that was going on. So that's why I said whether they were, was directly Israelites or non directly Israelites. Um, what took place during the Chalcedonian Creed and stuff like that. Um, the argument was about the 
stuff that was taking place um, or, or what was going to take place during the Council of Nicaea. You had these people, you know, over the origins of the Messiah. So what I'm saying is um, whether they were directly Israelite directly, it gives validation that it was a dispute over who we would call Hebrews or Israelites or Jews. You see what I'm saying? All right, can I can I can I make some clarification here because that's a lot of um, no disrespect, but a lot of hogwash because you can't call the people something that they don't call themselves. These people, and I, and I don't know if people are familiar with this, but under the Aksumite Empire, they worship a god named Astar, and they worship other gods. There was like four different gods that they had, and there was like a battle with King Izana because he had to cater for the indigenous people, plus he was giving them a whole new religion of Christianity. All right. So at that point, the issue is not if anybody's a Judean or if anybody's an Israelite, because the term Israelite wasn't being used there. There's nobody calling anybody Israelite. This is, this is something that black Americans who claim biblical, claim that they're Hebrew Israelites need to understand. Nobody's using the term Israelite like how you guys use it. Nobody's using that. The Bible is the Bible that input this information and call them the chosen and this and that. You cannot now put it on them. All right? I'm going to talk about the Demet Empire later, brother. But what I want, to, I want to say to my brother is that you have to be clear. You can't just assume that these people are Israelites and Judeans. We throw these words out too much. This is why I asked the shutting down crew, can you prove to me that Judeans were Israelites? Because outside the biblical text, you can't. These people are part of a 10 or 12 tribe system that actually, there's no proof that there was, these people ever considered themselves to be a part of a tribe or anything. But in the biblical text, which was influenced, if you read Karen, Karen Armstrong's book about the, the reformation of how, and how the Bible got developed, you will see she talks about the fusion, how the cultures got, the, got fused, got um, together, the Greek and the, 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 the Hebrew culture. That's why you had a fight where you had some people who were following the Hellenistic ways, and there were some Judeans who said, hey, nah, I ain't following no, no Hellenistic ways. So this is why we need to understand history and look at books that were actually written and get an understanding of it. So we can't just run around and use these terms, these people are Israelites, because you, you, know, you want to say, Garfield, I got you with this. No, the council, the, 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 um, the Edict of Milan is when he nationalized Christianity. That's what a lot of people need to know. He made Christianity a national religion. What happened is, apparently, there were different bishops with different ideas and how to do the whole thing with Arius and whatever. But what I want, to, what I want people to understand is, if, if he's talking about the Chalcedon Council, I think that was 451. That was after the, the, the Council of Nicaea. I didn't even Google it or anything. I think that's after. But regardless of what you're saying, bro, you would have to bring information and tell me where to look to find the term Hebrew, Jew, or Israel in any of these documents or people saying that they were present. Because if you study the history of that time period, the Jews were being punished because nobody wanted anything to do with them. Because what they were doing is they'd come into your country and they would disguise like they're part of you. So they were like crypto Jews in, in this culture. They, they're hiding that they're Jews. Then they would charge usury, charge interest, and make all the money, and then they get kicked out of the country. This is why Jews get kicked out everywhere they go. They are going around charging people interest, making money. That's why you have banking systems and all that stuff with the Rothschild family and all of them right now. Those are not us. Those Jews are not us. And we need to, we need to wake up and realize that. That is not us. Because if it was us, we wouldn't be in the condition we're in today. Because these people set up trade networks all over the world. They were in China, India. They set up the trans-Saharan trade. They were the monetary people behind all of that stuff. When the slaves were going into Europe, they were the ones, the Jews, they were the ones. You are not those people, family. Because you now you're going to tell me that Jews was wicked and they were enslaving Africans. You don't want to be a part of that. That's not us. So we can't, every time we see the term Jew, we say, oh, when you talk about Jews, it's white people. But when we're reading about Jews in West Africa and we see Jew, the translation, we jump and say, hey, that's us. We can't have it both ways. We can't. But, but Madam Kemet, thanks for the, for the comment, brother. But you'd have to tell me a source that says Israel, Jews, and Hebrews, or whatever. There's no source that says that. There's no source. Well, the thing about it, the thing about it, brother Garfield, um, each captivity that the um, Israelites went into, their names was changed. So, um, so it's going to be, the information is out there, but it's going to be difficult um, 
to just come with it like but the information is out there um you know that's what happened that's why this the information is so scattered because every captivity they went to their names was changed you know what okay I mean? all right let, let's let's test your theory but, you know right i don't want to um, hold, on, hold on hold on let's test your theory when they were under captivity under the assyrians what did their names change to? um I'm not sure at the moment, but um, I can get you that information. But their names changed. Each captivity they went to, their names got changed, no, but, 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 just like no. in Babylon, um, where you had when they changed their name to Meshach. What's up? Let me let me let me do this. Let me do this, brother. Everywhere the Jews went, they were they went there. They were never in captivity, by the way. We need to get out of that. They were deported because they were smart people, especially when it comes to finances. They were people that showed people how to build up their country. So everybody wanted a Jew in their country. The Persians wanted it. The, the, the Babylonians wanted it. The, 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 um, the, the, the Greeks wanted them. Everybody wanted them because they built up the culture. This is why y'all need to research the, the Igibi family, E-G-I-B-I family. You need to research the Morashu family, research the al Yahuda tablet. These Jews were brought in by Nebuchadnezzar, and he made them congressmen and senators and give them income-producing land and gave them a town called Judah Town. People who are slaves and ain't worth jack a land called Judah Town. Come on, family. These people were brought into these countries to build them up. That's what they were doing. They weren't slaves. So that's why when we look around, we find Yahwistic names. People with the Yahwistic names got like Jeremiah, Isaiah. We find those type of names in Babylon before Nebuchadnezzar came, took over. This is why he wanted them, brother. The Morasho, the Morasho is um, M-U, brother, M-U-R-A-S-H-U, the Morasho, and the Igibi, E-G-I-B-I. Look, look it up. It, it, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to transform anybody from being a Hebrew Israelite because I think our community needs you guys. We need people that don't smoke, don't drink, don't sell drugs, that's cleaning up their lives. We need it, but we don't need, I don't need, I, I've never drank in my life, and I've never smoked in my life. I don't run around. I don't kill people. I don't sell drugs. I don't do nothing illegal. And this, I don't need a Bible to tell me that. I, of course, I have principles, of course, that I live by morals because, I mean, that's the life. I have to live by morals. But I don't need the Bible to tell me that or the promise of a, of a next kingdom or a king coming. We've been waiting based on prophecies forever. We've had prophecies over and over and over that have not been fulfilled. We had prophecies during the, the, the Maccabean period. We had prophecies in the first century. We got prophecies from 18, 3,800 years ago. There have always been prophecies in cultures, and that's what's keeping us because we read these prophecies from back then and try to apply it now, and that is incorrect. We need to stop that, and that's how people are making a killing. You see, the difference between Garfield saying he's an Akan, I have not come on Salah Showtime and said that everybody needs to be an Akan. You need to start following the Obosums and start praying to these deities and start doing ancestor worship, pouring libation, start rolling dices, and start working with people with um, chromancy and, and, and all these different things. I have not come on Salah Showtime and try to sell no religion to nobody. But the problem with my brothers and sisters is you are selling it like it's the truth when you really don't understand your book or even know the book. You don't know who wrote your book. You don't know when. You don't know who altered it, who changed it. You don't know nothing. But you be, yet, you believe in it. We can't do that. But you, the minute you go out and preach it and say, this is what we all need to follow, then Garfield has the right to come out and say, hey, I don't believe this. I think this is wrong. This is why I come at the text, because I understand the text, how it's being developed. I study every day, and I'm going to keep on studying. Your belief and my belief cannot be the same, obviously. But I had never come to anybody in this community and say, hey, Garfield says he's an Akan. This is his culture. He's trying to reorient himself, and I want everybody to do the same. If I did that, then you could say, Garfield, you believe this? Ah, and start attacking me because now I'm selling my religion or selling my belief system or selling my culture to you. But you guys claim that you are bloodline Israelites, and you can't prove when you went into West Africa. Nobody can prove it. Nobody has called in and said, hey, I come from here, and I did my DNA test. I did this and this culture, and I could show you this culture, and when this happened and when that happened. Listen, there's no Bible in West Africa until the Portuguese. So that alone kills the whole argument. Come on, family. We got to do better, man. You have a next caller, pal? Next caller. All right. Can you hear me? Hello? 
All right, there yes, we go. Sir. All right, family, once again, it's the Hot Tea segment, and we're in the overtime part of the show, and I appreciate all the callers out there that called in right away before that time ran out in the overtime portion of the show. Uh, so all you got to do now is simply press number one, and that lets me know that you have a question or a comment. I do have some email question. Hold on, let me go to it. Is it e- Let me see. Yeah, I have one from uh, Philip. It says, I'm a fan of your work on HOK. Can you let us know, in your opinion, who are the top three brothers that really represent consciousness within the community? Top three that, that represent consciousness. Hmm. I would say I'm from the Amin Ra squad. I would say Raw Bond. Raw Bond. Everybody know Raw Bond. And I would say Truth Story. That's it. All right. There you go. <laughs> There's a lot you got your more. question. I mean, you talk yeah. about Asar Imotep, you talk about San Jedi, you talk about um, Jonathan Owens, you talk about my brother Sean from Sesh Medjineta, you talk about Wajau. There's a lot of people, you know, but those are my top three right now. Those are my top three right there. Yeah, I know that you're on uh, uh, Facebook doing your thing. Is there any questions or your, your end that you want to answer from the people that's on your uh, Facebook feed? Um, hold on a second. Let me see. Um... And again, family, uh, simply press number one. We're in the overtime part of the show. Or send me an email at debatetalkforyou at gmail.com, and I'll gladly read your question. We're in the overtime part. We have about eh, maybe like 40 minutes left on the air in the overtime part of the show. But we appreciate the family out there. Got Hold on a second here. Hold on one second. Um, for those on um, Facebook, if you have a question, let me know um, if you guys have a question. I want, to, I want to say to every Hebrew Israelite that's listening or anybody from the Bay Talk for You family, as long as you live in a just life, what Garfield says doesn't matter. Treat people. The best religion anybody could call out is treat people the way you want to be treated. That's the best religion. Best religion anybody could follow. Because you know what? I am still your brother at the end of the day. We still are here in the struggle. It's just that your paradigm is different than my paradigm. You believe that there's a Jesus or a God that's going to come and cast judgment on us. If you study prophecy, and that's something I want to go into real quickly here, there are four main prophets in the Bible. You have Ezekiel, you have Isaiah, you have um, Jeremiah, and you have Daniel. I could point out right now all four that have made errors and have made false prophecies. Now, why would I point that out? Because of Deuteronomy 18. If you listen to my conversation with um, Divine Prospect, we talked about Deuteronomy 18. He said he don't subscribe to Deuteronomy 18, saying that if somebody, if the prophet tells a lie, we need to just throw him out. In Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah, they talk about Nebuchadnezzar destroying Egypt after the, 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 the stuff at Tyre. It has never happened. It's a false prophecy. Does that mean you should throw all three out? Hey, if you want to have that conversation with me, set it up. We could debate about the prophecy. And this is this is me telling everybody. Yeah, you got you got some good brothers on here. I mean, I admire I my I love Brother Josh as a debater. I think he's he he has that Brooklyn magic man. He's just wow. <laughs> you know, I love Brother Josh as a debater. He's a very good debater. Brother Zadat Ben Israel, he's a very good debater. You know, I love some of the stuff that Laurent's been doing lately. Um Divine, of course, we all know I love Divine Prospect already, you know, and, um, but they're still my brothers. You know, we might not agree, but they're still my brothers. If I hear that somebody, if I saw any of those brothers, any brother at all, no matter what you believe, being beat up by the police, I'm not going to stand by and watch it. It's not going to happen. You are my brother. I am your, I am your brother. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> Dwight Patton, you're crazy. Dwight Patton says, it's going to rain and snow tomorrow. He's a prophet. <laughs> He's being stupid. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Any more questions, brother? Uh, now we just got people listening to the show. Once again, family, this is your time. Golf Real Read is here. You know how the hot seat is. Once it's over, you know, I don't want to hear no, oh, you didn't give me a chance. Let's, nope, this is your chance. <laughs> Call in. Let's press number one. And uh, other than that, you know, we pretty much we appreciate you, brother. You can say some final words. I have all the information in the description box. I even added the website 
uh, you know, Dagger Squad, all in the, in the description box, the YouTube page. So, uh, yeah, so last words, brother. Don't that, know. A lot of people don't know that Sal was the first person to give me an opportunity to debate in the community. I mean, I've debated my whole life, but it um Zadat Ben Israel was a debate about if Jesus was a I don't remember what it was, but you know I, I think the brother won that debate. The I'm plagiarized deity, the, uh, the yeah, plagiarized the deity. Plagiarized yep. deity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was my first debate. Then I had a debate with I think Laron, and then we did a whole thing about the Sabbath. We did Daniel. Um, I think I debated Zadok again the second time. I think I did much better. I think I won the second debate with him. And um, but you see, it's not. Sometimes people gotta understand. Sometimes it's not about the debate; it's about the information. And what I would love every Hebrew Israelite to do is, if you believe in the Bible, don't go outside of it. Stay with the text. Don't go outside the text because once you start playing the game, oh, the Akan is in the Bible. Because Akan and Ashan and, and, and he start playing these linguistic games and then you look at they start breaking it down because A and and and, and, and K and, and, and um K and N in, in, in um in English is different than K and N in Hebrew or whatever language it was written back then. So it's not the same. So we gotta stop playing these games, these word games, and leave out the seventy eighty West Africa. All you gotta do is try to identify yourself with the text. And just live your life. Live your life to the best. If you think God is going to come back and help you, hey, there are other cultures that believe their God is coming back. You know, you have people in, in different West African cultures that taught the same way because they've been colonized. So, you know, it's all over. So I'm saying to everybody out there, do what you do best. Treat your brother the way you want to be treated at the end of the day. You're going to believe what you're going to believe. I'm going to hold to my culture the best way I can, and I'm going to live the, the best life I could live. So, folks, you might never, ever, you might hear me on debate talking and say, oh, Sal, why you got this non-believer on the channel? The fact of the matter is, why am I a non-believer? I was a believer before, but why am I, not, why am I now a non-believer? Because I have realized that most of the stuff in the Bible is historical fiction. Most of the stuff. But if you want to hold to it, go ahead. It's not going to affect me. I'm just saying I'm not under that spell anymore. That, that's what's me personally. If you want to continue, that's, that's up to you. We never had a Bible while we were in West Africa until white folks came. And here we are in America today. Deuteronomy 28, 68, go on my timeline. I show that the, 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 um, some of the curses in Deuteronomy 28 were copied sometimes word for word from the Assyrian text, the Esardon Treaty. And um, if, you, if you study the Esardon Treaty, his treaty was with Tyre and other countries around, so you know they didn't copy it from the Bible. So whoever wrote the Bible, took the information directly from the Assyrian text. They could have done it early or late. Who cares? All right? But um, I just want to say to everybody out there, man, I'm on every morning, 8.25 a.m. We have the um, we have the morning money show. Look in, in the box. You're going to see um, Sal's going to put all the information. I thank you guys for calling in. I thank you for the questions. I thank you for being respectful. And I thank you, Sal, for giving me the opportunity to be on your channel, bro. I really appreciate it. Who knows? Maybe I have to do a part two. But they're going to say, oh, I didn't get to question him. You know, but I, I dropped a lot of information. Of course, folks not going to agree. You know, the brother brought up Eldad the Danite and brought up all these different things. But listen, man, I got love for everybody, man. Do what you do and handle it the best way that you can. All right? We're not going to fight people for what they believe in. All right? We're not going to do that. We're just going to put information out and we're going to do what we're going to do. All right? So I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you, the folks on Facebook who stayed the whole time and acknowledged your information and um, showed me some love and gave me a lot of jokes while I was here. And I did say the sister daggered me. Yes, yeah, she did. She definitely daggered me, man. I, that's why I didn't respond. Sometimes you just got to let people slide. They sit in their ways, man. Just leave it alone. You know? Just leave it alone. All right, Sal. That's it from me, brother. All right, man, we appreciate you. And also, family, let me know who else you want in the hot seat. You know, anybody could come to the hot seat. We done had uh, uh, Irritated Genie on here. We had uh, Nasi Ashabel. Whoever you want in the hot seat, whoever you want to ask questions to, uh, just let me know. Send me an email at debatetalkview at gmail.com, and we'll invite them. We'll invite them to the show. And, you know, that's why the hot seat is here for, for you to finally ask your questions and your comments. 
to whoever we have in a hot seat segment. So we appreciate the family out there. Make sure you check the description box if you want to reach out to Garfield Reed. And, of course, we have another show tomorrow. Make sure you stay tuned to the Big Toffee Radio. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, and God bless.